for Arkansas. There in the red, the Cardinal. And the Navy wearing the white and gold helmet will receive back deep Eric Wallace. Wallace is back waiting about four yards, two yards in the end zone. Here he comes. A wedge up the middle. Wallace up over the 25 to about the 26 yard line. And Navy on about a 28 yard Eric return. Wallace and Eric Wallace will have it first and 10. And here comes Bill Byrne, the first sophomore since 1971 to start in the backfield for Navy. He's from Pacifica, California. His tailback is Rich Klaus replacing, of course, Napoleon McKellen, number 23. Number 28, John Burner is the fullback, a power runner. Wide receivers are Chris Weiler, 33, and Ken Hine, number 81. Here's the first play of the game. They're going to go straight to Klaus. Klaus in a slant to the right, fights through two tackles to the 30, and picks up about three yards. Okay. Defensively, it's a four-man front for Arkansas, a little bit unusual oh, well. defense that Paul will talk about later. The tackles are Rodney Beecham and uh, Frankie Lisko. The Nils guard is Tony Church, holds defensive end Raven Caldwell. Look out for him, number 84. Linebackers are David Basil and Nick Miller, and Mark Lee, who plays like a defensive end. Deep backs, Wyatt Jones, Laston Anderson. Second down pass. Over the middle of tight end Stevens. Short of a first down about the 34-yard line. Big Mark Stevens. 6'2", senior from Hialeah, Florida. All right, Mark Stevens is a big tight end, but watch, he's just a little under pattern. All they're trying to do is get Mark underneath the linebackers. You're going to see that is not a linebacker. Lasker, number three, the safety, is probably one of the toughest men that they have in the secondary, makes the tackle. Third down, three to go for the Navy. Possession play. Straight over the middle, he hits his man for first down. It's fine. Stevens again, but tight end on a crossing pattern. Boy, they like to go to the big guy. He's a sure catcher. That was Hine. Ken Hine, who came in from the flanker spot to put it in. Nick Miller made the tackle. That was Stevens. Yeah, they're going to the tight end. What's happening? They're going to have to look at, too, Rich Klaus, who's number 23 on that last play, came out of the backfield, and no one went with him. First and 10, Navy at its own 39. Here's the fake of the play action. Going deep for the long one. Down there, and the man falls down. It was Chris Weiler trying to get on the long one downfield. It was covered by Kevin Anderson. They try the freshman. Cornerback, there he is. Arkansas thinks he's going to be a great one, but he's still a red shirt freshman. Kevin Anderson made First year varsity ball for Morris in Arkansas. Go Chatfield with the and 10. He knows Jer uh, Gary Tranquil so well, he said, once in a while, they'll throw that long bomb and try to keep you honest. But then, basically, they're going to they're gonna try to run outside with Klaus and hit you in the short pattern, and that's what we should be seeing. Mike Ray is coming at Flanker. Here he comes in motion. Second down and 10. He's going to up the middle of Klaus. He breaks it. 50 yard line. Klaus still going into Arkansas Terry from the 38 yard line. And there's Rich Klaus, the man replacing Napoleon McCallum, breaking his first big gainer over 20 yards on second and 10. Remember what this young man said. He's been waiting a long time to play this position halfback with Napoleon McCallum out, but watch him explode. When he gets to the hole, the blocking is there. Now when he gets in the secondary, he knows what to do. Moves the ball away from the defender, picks up some blockers downfield. Number 33, Chris Weiler is down there. Picks up a first down inside the 40. And Bill Byrne has the midshipman rolling early in the game into Arkansas territory. First down play. The fullback Burner and the right side for a short game. John Burner ran into all he could handle and more from David Basil and Nick Miller, the two active linebackers, and the Arkansas defense. And in this defensive scheme, I just hope for the Bill, defensive coordinator, the key men. They certainly are. They feel that the linebackers. Basil and Miller, of course, Caldwell plays the defensive end of the linebacker. They make the majority of the tackles. Two wide receivers lob down the blow of Pario's screen. Ken Hine up at the top. Now they set men in a slot passing formation on second down and nine. Here's Byrne looking. Byrne fires downfield, and it is almost intercepted. Mark Stevens intended, but Kevin White almost had that one picked off from his counterback post. He's probably the leader of the Arkansas defensive secondary. There he is. He may have had an injury. White coming off. Look like he's holding his right arm. He is holding his arm. Look at White. White's playing the corner. Number three, Lasker, is the, is the safety man. Stevens is there as the receiver. But what happened is Kevin Wyatt just left the wide receiver on the outside, moved in to help the safety, and now he's hurt. Well, they've had to bring Charles Washington in, a sophomore who's been injured, hasn't played yet. 
So let's see what Byrne does going toward Washington. Here's Byrne right back to the air. Byrne's got room. Here's Byrne inside the 35 to the 31. Short of a first down by about three. It'll be third down and three. Nick Miller and Mark Lee went back to make the stop for Arkansas. That's a third down play facing the sophomore quarterback, Bill Byrne. Isn't it amazing, my friend, when it looks like the quarterback has a lot of room to run? The linebackers are dropped off eight to ten. But as soon as he crosses that yard marker, he cannot throw the football, and they converge on him, both Miller and Lee. Why, they love the hogs here in Ozark country. Arkansas, enthusiasm running high for Ken Hatfield. Fourth down and three. Going to go for it on fourth down pass. Now here, and be thrown for loss. That was Raven Caldwell, number 84, making the big play again for Arkansas. Navy gamble down in Arkansas territory on fourth and three. Raven Caldwell's going to come out on the outside. John Burner, the fullback, was blocking on Caldwell. Did not stay with his block. Once that happens, here comes Caldwell. Also, number 50, Doug Rose was out there on Caldwell. Didn't stop him. All right, that's a big play by Caldwell. Here's Arkansas now. Out of the wishbone and a crossing action. Miller. Carl Miller up over the 40. Boots through about nine yards on the play. Start by Mark Fearley. The free safety for Navy. Arkansas backfield. Danny Nutt getting the call to quarterback number 14. Carl Miller, 30. Terry, that's the left half back. The right half is Terry Tatum. He's celebrating his birthday today. And the fullback, the dangerous man in the back for number 32, Marshall Foreman. Here's the wishbone formation. And they give it straight ahead to Tatum for the first down. About the 45-yard line, Eric Fudge, defensive end for Navy, hit him down, but he's got plenty enough for the first down at the 45. Navy defense needs some rest tonight. They'll not be able to stand there and slug it out with Arkansas unless Navy can make some first downs. Well, the midshipman came out with a pretty good drive, but Arkansas stopped him on the big play. And here are the Razorbacks now, who opened with a tie with Ole Miss, then came back to defeat Tulsa last week on four field goals by Greg Horn. This is true wishbone, one wide receiver. Pull back, now here's the pitch out on the option play to Tatum, and he'll go nowhere. That time, Navy read the option play perfectly. Joe Papetti came up from strong safety. Navy did play the option play perfectly, but Marshall Foreman, number 32, the fullback, at 190 pounds, they say 5'9", 5 5'7 5 and a half is actually what he is. When he went through the line of scrimmage, no one went after him. So don't be surprised to see him come back with Marshall Foreman going up the middle and that handoff to him. James Shebitz. James Shebitz, to probably the best receiver, is back in for Arkansas. They've stuck to the ground so far. And now here is not looking to pass. Looking for Shebitz. Throws a little lob pass out to Clap for Tatum. And it goes incomplete. He wanted Shebus, but he was covered nicely downfield. Rouser got in to put a little bit of pressure on Nutt, and he just lobbed it over the head of Tatum. Marcus Elliott right there on the, in right 56 in your screen. You just see him blocking on Zaliski. Now, Marcus Elliott is probably the best offensive lineman that Arkansas has, and he is a good one. Great pass blocker and also a good run blocker. Arkansas faces third and 11 at their own 44. Here's Nutt looking to throw. Drills it. He's hit Sheebus down here at about the 49. He'll be taken down. Picks up about six yards on the play. Mark Fearley made the tackle, and it'll bring on fourth down for Arkansas. So Navy gave him the short one to bring up fourth down, and the Razorbacks will have to kick it away. There's Sheebus, who's one of the leading receivers in the Southwest Conference here in the early going 1984. And the punt is Greg Horn. Arn, who's had a punt of 72 yards, 56 yards this year. He's averaging 43.5. Petty back deep, along with Eric Wallace for Navy. Oh, wow, booming kick. Nice one inside the 10. Pulled down by Wallace. There's Wallace, a dangerous runner, comes up to the 20-yard line. And so Navy will start its own 20. First and 10. First period, no score. Navy, Arkansas. Eric Wallace returns the punt. Me return some of the tickets they did not sell, and they were gobbled up in hours here by these hot Arkansas fans. Here comes Navy now. Bill Byrne getting another look at the Arkansas defense. Kevin White is back in there, so he is not. Here comes Klaus. Gets a crease, and Klaus hits up over the 25-yard line. Well, Klaus is not McCallum, but he has shown 
Brooks, a great running strength of his own. You don't have to be McCallum the way the line is blocking Sears, Rose, and Coombs up in front, but watch Klaus. He does not hesitate. Straight ahead, east-west runner, north-south, whatever you want to call it, but when he explodes through the hole, that's confidence in your offensive line. Well, when Klaus was in high school in Pennsylvania, he became the third leading rusher in Pennsylvania high school history, which says a lot for him. They give it to the fullback. Turner on a slap to the right for the first down. He's got it. Up over the 31-yard line goes John Burner, power-running sophomore Burner from Avon Lake, Kelly. Ohio. Probably the best running fullback Navy's had in a few years. You know, this is a very good sign for Navy because Navy said that they would come out and throw the ball. They must throw the football. But they are running the ball against Arkansas, which now makes Arkansas think run, forget about pass, and the short stuff will be open. Here's Byrne on the play action. Byrne drills a crossing pattern into Quake, trying to hit Stevens. That's a favorite pattern of there. They send two deep receivers, usually a wide out in the back. And then they bring Stevens across underneath the coverage. That was just thrown a little wide. There's Tranquil. And he sends the plays in with his uh, alternating wide receivers, Chris Weiler and John Lobb. So Lobb brings the word in as Navy faces second and ten here at their own 32. No score with eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Klaus again, and he doesn't get much. Backed up in the middle by Raven Caldwell. A brilliant junior in from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Another Bob, Billy Ray Smith, they say, and maybe not the same style, but he's certainly excited. Raven Caldwell, when he comes down a line of scrimmage, it, you cannot delay at that line of scrimmage because he just goes for the back with the ball. He's not, he has no concern about the quarterback option going down a line. He's looking for the back running into the hole off tackle. Navy facing third and nine from the 33. Draw play on the draw. As it comes Klaus, and he will not get it. Gets up over the 35, and then he is stacked up. And the neighborhood of the 37-yard line. He's going to be a good five yards short on the first down. Nick Miller, David Basilos, linebacking pair Nick again. Miller and David Basil it's a draw Basil. play to Klaus. Tony Cherico, number 64, is going to come in and make the play. He gets, he, well, actually, he turned Klaus to his side. He got help from his friend. Bobby Joe Edmonds, D for Arkansas. All right, guys. They've got Edmonds in there. Edmonds takes it over the 30-yard line, down the 36. So Kevin Wyatt is not in the lineup for Arkansas. That was Bobby Joe Edmonds. No score, first period. Tackle made by Robert Dill. First and 10. Arkansas defeated Navy 29-17. That's the only previous meeting between these two. And Navy now has come back again here in 1984 after losing its great Napoleon McCallum to take on the Razorbacks. Arkansas getting the ball for the second time tonight. Danny Nuff back in it. Quarterback number 14, first and 10 from his own 36. Nuff takes the fullback, deep pass, hits his wide, and out comes Miller, cut down on the corner. That was a true triple option out of the wishbone, a fake to the fullback, looked like he would keep, then he pitched the last moment to Miller, hit down by Vince McMahon. Well, I didn't worry too much about Denny Nutt getting down the line of scrimmage with the ball that time. They say he's, just, he's a little bit slower than Taylor, but on that play, he executed very well. They picked up almost five yards on the play. Navy use a five-man front defensively with Fudge and Rouse of the ends. Rutherford, a great one, and Gillespie the tackles, and Pippo the middle guard. Here's a gift to Miller on a little bit of a counteraction play, coming back to the right with Flo going left, and it picks up very little. Pippo, the middle guard, 242-pounder from Strongsville, Ohio, and that tells you a little bit about him, the way he plays. Watch it. 56 on 54. That's Elliott, 56 against Gillespie, 54, and look at the blocking in there that battle but as long as he maintains the Lesky maintains his man at the line of scrimmage it gives his other people a chance to get in to make the tackle that's good heads up play third and four for Arkansas at the 42 and they go to Murray got the first down to build the 45 collared around the 48 yard line by Vince McBeth and Mark Fearley and the secondary for Navy so Arkansas even though it's a smaller offensive line opening some holes all right Foreman 34 the man we say must touch the football but just take a look at Foreman going in he gets a block, not a major block inside on Mike Taylor, number 62. Watch it right here. Enough to get him out of the way so Miller can pick up the first down. Good block. They call this formation the flex bone, but what you're seeing right here pretty much is the wishbone, the full house backfield for Arkansas. 
And that gives his fullback, and Foreman looks like he ran into one of his own players and has just stumbled forward to the 50 before the Zaleski to pull into the turf. And so Arkansas reaches this midfield for the first time. Two-yard gain, second down, eight, upcoming for the Razorbacks. No score here with five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, it's been a perfect uh, night for football. Weather's dipping down in the high 40s. No threat of rain, no wind. So it should be a great game, Paul, from that standpoint. Hey, you're up here under the hot lights. <laughs> down over at school. That's only the first quarter. Second and eight for Nutt. Gives again to his fullback on a slant. And Foreman trying to muscle his way through. And he can't get past Pimpo again. So Dave Pimpo, he shares the middle guard post with Dirk McFarlane. Makes two stops in a row. Although that gave you an idea of some of the snap off the ball Arkansas is getting. Because Foreman picked up three yards. Well, now Arkansas will go to a throwing situation. Andy Upchurch, 52 to center. center. The last two plays has not handled. Dave Pippo, number 61, and that's the reason why he's made the tackle. Third down and five, and here's the play action face by Nutt. Nutt going down the left side, a man wide open, and it is caught down there by Sebus, and he's out of bounds inside the 15. James Sebus, stopped by Eric Wallace of Navy. Perfect call by Arkansas, sending Sebus away from the flow, and for a flag pattern, it almost fell six. Yeah, but he just turns Eric Wallace around. She bets what he does is go down. The fake is in the line. The blocking is excellent. Look at the blocking at the line of scrimmage. No problem there. And when she bets breaks to the post, you see where Wallace is to the left of your screen. He took him all the way into the middle of the field, broke back to the outside. Danny Nutt put the ball right on target to Shebest. They have a first down at the 12. Opportunity for Arkansas. Here comes the ops again. Nutt pitches outside to Miller, and he's going to be thrown about the line of scrimmage. So Navy again reads the option, plays it well, does Eric Wallace, who was burned a little bit on the previous play, and Joe Papetti, the rover, or strong safety. Navy secondary getting a real workout here from this active Arkansas attack. This is not just the old four yards in the cloud of dust on attack and the wishbone. They call it the flex bone, and they'll often set their halfbacks out in the gap as slot backs or wing backs. Right now they're full house, double tight end. Second and 10 from the 12. Miller to the right side inside the 10 and pounded back from about the 7 or 8. Tough yards to make down here. Navy giving grudgingly, but Arkansas a little bit relentless now, pressing on after getting the big play on the pass from Nutt to Shebest. Rouser got help from Penny on that stop up the middle. Gain is four, and it's third down and six for Arkansas. Ken Hatfield, who does his own offensive coordinating, Sending the play on. Seabest is back in there. He's a big play receiver. Foreman is the guy they like to go up the middle. They send Seabest out to the left. Everybody else in tight. And back is not going to Seabest though in the corner. And it's incomplete. Seabest was there. This time covered by Wallace. Shebest did that time. And he got, almost had to know they're going to throw the ball to him because Shebest lined, lined up way inside on the hash mark, which gave him the room to the outside to run against Eric Wallace. And the ball is thrown. It's right on target. Shebest misses the ball. And if he adjusts to the ball, he's got it. Hits him right in the hands. Greg Horn now comes in to try for a field goal. Be about a 25-yard attempt. There's Horn, number 11. Tied the Arkansas record last week with four, and he missed twice. Either one of which could have given him a new Arkansas record, but he hit four that led the way to victory over Tulsa. This will be spotted on the 15, a 25-yard attempt. Not much of an angle, pretty much in front. Good snap, good kick. Arkansas looks like on the boards. It's good. Arkansas takes the lead with three minutes to go in the first quarter from Little Rock. The score, Arkansas three, maybe nothing. ESPN, delighted to be on hand in Little Rock, Arkansas for the ninth CFA game between Arkansas and Navy. Arkansas has drawn first blood, number 10, Ernie Villarreal, a sophomore from Carson, California. And for the kickoff, Eric Wallace and Rich Klaus are standing back at the goal line for Navy. Arkansas scores on its second possession, leads 3 0. Here's a little squib kick. Up man is taking it. It's a big uh, call in. And coming up here is Chad uh, Van Holzen with little less than three minutes left in the first quarter of the score. Arkansas 3, Navy nothing. And we'll be right back at Little Rock. Thank you. 
Any good fisherman can tell you it's hard to compete with Mother Nature, but it's not impossible. Now the manufacturers of revolutionary fish formula have done it again with new fish formula crawfish. Spray it on crankbaits, jig and eels, or other artificial lures, and bass, walleye, sauger, any game fish that feeds on crawfish will immediately be attracted to the lifelike crawfish smell. Well-known fishermen like Bill Dance and Billy Westmoreland have thoroughly tested new fish formula crawfish and both attest to fantastic fishing results. Of course, they still recommend using popular fish formula 2 when fish are feeding on shad or other forage fish and fish formula 1 for catfish. To order your supply of new fish formula crawfish or any of the popular fish formula products, simply specify the type desired and send only $9.95 plus $2 shipping and handling for each 8-ounce bottle to Fish Formula, Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut. Or to order COD, call toll-free right now, 1-800-544-1000. Call now. Well, here are scores, and what an interesting Saturday it's been. Syracuse and a <laughs> stunning upset of number one ranked Nebraska, 17-9 at the Cary Dome in Syracuse. Looks like Texas is a shoe in to go number one. They routed Penn State, and Oklahoma rolled up a 24-6 win over Kansas State. We'll show you some more scores in a moment. Navy try to get going here again with Phil Byrne, and now trail 3-0, going 34. They get it across. Faust tries the corner on the right and gets about a yard. Not much more than that. David Basil. The active junior linebacker from Panama City, California, who was out last year, is very much in this year. He's the leading tackle. Now they've got to go back. They, they threw some short passes. They were throwing them to the tight ends. Now with the, what they must do, and, and the man coming out of the backfield is Rich Klaus, number 23. He seems to be open when he comes out. Now they've got him on a wing. May throw. Now they got about four receivers out wide. Here comes Klaus in motion. Burn on a straight drop. Flips it out to fullback. Burner gets a block on a little screen, and he's tripped up. Oh, what a big defensive play that was by Mark Lee. Or Burner would have picked up five or ten more yards. Other scores. Auburn is coming back now. They beat Tennessee today, 29-10. They're in the SEC race now. Georgia Tech's done Clemson. That's two losses in a row now for the Tigers after losing to Georgia last week. Michigan got by Indiana and a close one in the Big Ten. Notre Dame held off Missouri in the final minutes to win 16 to 14. Washington dropped over Miami Redskins of Ohio 53 to 7. LSU stunned Southern California. Boy, the Tigers are roaring down in Baton Rouge. Here comes Burn on a rollout. Flying, and he's got a man open here at the sidelines. It's Hine out of bounds at about the 49 of Arkansas. 81 Ken Hine ran a sideline pattern, and Byrne was able to stave off the Razorbacks until he got it to him. Byrne might have been able to run with that ball too, Jim, but what happened was that they had Jones number 15 on Hine. Jones never closed fast enough, and Hine just sat there on the sidelines patiently, not going out of bounds, making a reception, first down inside the 50. First down for Navy, something Jerry Tranquil says his offense must do. His defense has to have some rest to stay with Arkansas. Again, they got four quick wide receivers out. And they run up the middle with Burner, the fullback, trying to cross Arkansas up, and he gets a short gain, and that's all. Matter of fact, the ball was knocked loose there, it looked like, for a moment. I watched Klaus, number 23, go in motion. And the play was on a long count. He just kept running and running and running. And by the time they got done, the play was hand off. He knew it was going to the fullback. He just ran out of bounds and went to the bench. <laughs> Nobody was out there with him. Yeah, he comes back. <laughs> he's a very intense young man. You know, he gets very nervous and uptight. And uh, it hasn't been easy for him sitting on the bench for a year watching uh, McCallum play, although he was a big booster for him. Byrne takes the draw. Here's Byrne. Going to the sideline to Hine. He's got it with open field with Hunter. 25 to 20. Hine down the 15-yard line as Arkansas gambled on an interception. And Ken Hine got some extra running room for another 15 yards farther downfield. The defensive back made a tremendous mistake. And now watch at the end of this play. You're going to see the defensive back, number seven, Wyatt, I believe it is. He tries to go for the interception instead of taking the man. Watch this. He comes in front to knock the ball away. When you do that, you sacrifice six. And there goes Hine down the sidelines. The tackle's made by Lasker, but they're inside the 15, Navy. Great chance for Navy for the Arkansas 14. There go whistles. Ah, whether we had too long getting that play on the way or not, I think they had not moved the chain down. The officials had not moved the downs chains down, and so that's the holdup. First what guy, first, first down guy did. He was the only one. Yeah, he was there. He says that. Those other two, they're going to have to talk to him in a meeting. 
the down. You've got to win when they well, get a first down, you have to move the chain. Well, there's uh, Billy and the Hall going at it. 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. First and 10 Navy at the Arkansas 14. They trail 3 0. 14, he used big plays getting the score. There goes Klaus hitting the middle, and then he's pounded back. Fast about a yard. There was not much of a crease there. Nick Miller was standing right in the hallway with open arms. And so the gain is about a yard just inside the 13. Call it the 12. Give him a two yard gain. It'll be second and eight. That could be the last play of the first quarter. We're down to three seconds to go. Two, one. And before Navy can get back, the first quarter is over with a score. Arkansas three, Navy nothing, but Navy on the move. Arkansas fans calling for a goal line stand. Arkansas moved down deep on a pass from Danny Nutt to James Chivas. Navy held to kick the field goal. Navy has come down deep on a pass now to Hine. Let's see what they can do. Second out of nine. Here's the neck and roll out. There's the pass. It's thrown too low. They have the tight end Mark Stevens open. That was the bootleg rollout by Byrne to his right, sending everybody else left, and bringing the tight end over. Nice pattern, Paul. Oh, nice pattern, but they just didn't throw the ball. Byrne doesn't get him the ball. Watch, Mark Stevens is wide open. They're trying to cover with Lasker, the safety. Look at no one near him. That's Lee, number 22, but he'd have been too late. It was a touchdown. All right, still third down. It'll be third down, still eight yards to go for Navy. Just outside the Arkansas 12-yard line. Big play here for Navy. They don't pick it up here. They'll have to go for the time field goal. They give it to Klaus up the middle. Klaus is inside the four, and he stopped there, and it's going to be very close to a first down. Kevin Anderson stopping Klaus, but boy, what a jitterbug he is. He picks up almost eight yards on the play. Roll out, draw play, and they trapped up in the middle, and Klaus is there. He breaks it inside. He's about a yard short. They're going to kick the field goal, but watch Klaus. Back to his right. He sees the hole. Now look where they marked the ball. Now so you got to go where the ball hits. The referee was right on target. The ball hit right on the line. That's exactly where they marked the ball, even though Klaus went further. Todd Solomon, a junior from Jacksonville, Florida, comes in to try for the field goal. Has plenty of range. Bob Mish is in there to hold. He'll hold at the 11th, a 21 yard attempt. And there's the kick, and I think we got an even up game. The kick is good, and so we're tied up now. It is Arkansas three and Navy three, and we're tied at Little Rock. And we're especially happy to be here live from Little Rock, Arkansas. ESPN brings you College Football Association action. Tonight it's Navy, Arkansas, and we're tied 3-3. Early in the second quarter with 14 minutes to go in the half, Navy will kick off. That was Todd Solomon team the ball. Here's Carl Miller, number 30, had a 100-yard kickoff return against Baylor, which uh, puts him in a tie with about five or six other Arkansas players for the lowest, longest kickoff return ever. He's had three kickoff returns this year, averaging just under 22 yards of return. He is back, flanked by Cal Cagney and Warren, but the ball probably is going to go down to Miller. There's Solomon's kick. Not very deep at the 10 yard line. And here comes Miller. Then gets a little crease, and Miller comes over the 30. Another nice return to the 32 yard line, stopped by Eric Wallace. And Arkansas has pretty good field position here as they start first and 10. Now tied again at 3 3. Other scores today Alabama uh -oh. beaten again by Vanderbilt, 30 21. And it's going to be a long year in Tuscaloosa. Iowa over Illinois, that evens up things from last year for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes. West Virginia, what a great year they're having, but what a doleful year for Pittsburgh. That's four straight losses for the Panthers. Here's the keeping the options. The flags are down everywhere as Nutt made the option pitch out to Miller. But I think they're a little late getting that play on the way or lead to that or some movement before the snap. I, I was down in Baton Rouge last Monday night talking to the Baton Rouge Touchdown Club. What a fine bunch of people they are. And they are very enthused about their LSU team. One tie, they have no losses. We're talking about how big Southern Cal was. And I know there are a lot of guys that I played ball with in Buffalo from LSU, Gene Sykes down there. They were rooting. They had a few bob on it. <laughs> fact, there's some guys here in uh, Little Rock tonight you played with, like Lance Allworth, who's come back here to join the great 1964 team celebrated 20th anniversary. First to 10, Arkansas. Ball back to the 26. Give it to the fullback foreman. Hitting straight ahead. No, it is Derek Thomas. And Thomas 
just rocks his way along for a nifty game. Shot by Mark Fearley. So after the five-yard penalty on illegal procedure, Foreman gets that, or Thomas gets back that and more. Well, this is just a wishbone here. They, when, they, when they go flex, we'll show, we'll show you what the difference is on the flex bone. Wishbone is, is with the fullback first man that touches the ball. If it, the hole is there, he takes it. Thomas did that time, picked up about seven yards, and he got second and about eight. When they go flex, they take the wings out, and we'll show them when they come into it. Now here's the fake, and Nuff going back to the far side, and it is caught up around the 50-yard line by James Shebest again. Vince Macbeth, all he could do was uh, hit him down after the reception. Perfect throw by Danny Nutt, and he's shown as he's got the good arm. They're afraid of Shebest. They're doubling up on him. They're going it's, uh, short and long. Shebest is going to be with Macbeth out there, number 19. Macbeth makes the play, but that's after the first down. Big plays so far have been Danny Nutt to James Shebest. The long pass in the first quarter, or second quarter, got him down deep. And they're able to score the field goal. Now Navy has come back to pull even. 59 yards so far. And past two passes. Now here's a little flat pass that's going over ahead of Miller. Out on the flat left. Coming up fast is Joe Papetti. To cover the play. Deep backs for Navy. Eric Wallace, who is a great one. Probably the best athlete at one cornerback. And Vince McBeth at the other. Their free safety is Mark Fearley. And Joe Papetti is the strong safety or the rover back. Danny Nutt, who's pressed into service. Brad Taylor, who's just a few games away from becoming perhaps the all-time passing and total offense leader in Arkansas history. He's closing in on Joe Ferguson and Montgomery for those records. But he's out with a bruised leg, and so Nutt is pressed into service. He's looked very well. Here's Mel on the fake to pull back. Nutt keeps cuts downfield over the 50 to the Navy 47. Gain of about four on the play to make it second and six. Mark Fearley. Stopped in third and six. It'll be coming up after the incomplete pass. Furley is the man that really makes the play. Now watch Nutt come down the line. There's, of course, the ball of Thomas to the fullback. He takes it out. He sees the hole is not there. Furley, number 41, comes in and makes the play. But now the option is being played by number 47, the man you see in your screen, Papetti. He's waiting for the trail man. So Navy played that extremely well. We got a third down at seven. Reference there was to Rear Admiral Charles R. Larson, who's superintendent of the Naval Academy and who's in attendance here tonight. Third down play for Arkansas. Not on the keep. Now it pitches outside to Miller. And Miller's close and I think got the first down. The final little lunge by Carl Miller when he was hit by Vince McBeth. And that time Nutt looked like a veteran running the wishbone option play. He waited till exactly the right moment to make the pitch. All right, Miller's up limping now. But watch this here. Watch the pursuit. Now maybe you're going to see him come in. What happened was when they ran the play, McBeth, who was the corner man, Vince McBeth, 19, he made the play downfield after the first down, but someone had to take the trail, man. They didn't do it that time. Going to, to Arkansas's left, they played it very well. Going to the right, they didn't have a man on the trail person. That's three out of five third down conversions for Arkansas. Now they're back in the full house wishbone backfield at the Navy 40. First down, up the middle of the fullback. And it's Derek Thomas plunging right inside the 40 to about the 37. It'll be second down and seven coming up for Arkansas. Navy defense now getting ground. Mike Taylor, weak side linebacker who's been sparkling so far for uh, Gary Tranquil's defensive team. He's been going the real surprises. A junior from Winchester, Virginia. As you look here at the Arkansas huddle, as score shows 3-3 tie with 11.23 to go in the first half. Facing nut now is second down and seven at the 37 of Navy. Gives to the fullback. And coming back here, breaking through is Thomas for first down and more. Inside the 20, stopped about the 16 or 17. Joe Papetti. Navy having troubles here with the Arkansas fullbacks, and Thomas is coming even stronger than Foreman. If you overload and if you pursue too fast, what happens is they cut back. Take a look. The blocking is there. When you cut back into the inside like Thomas does right there, the only guy is the rover back or safety man, Papetti. But that's after he picked up about 15 or 16 yards. They're inside the 20 at the 17. Well, the spots Navy have to build his defense as linebacker. And you see the problem he had a crossing play here with Miller trying to counter. And Mike Taylor's waiting for him in the vicinity of the line of scrimmage. And there's Mrs. Gary Trenkler getting a view of things here. Lovely looking lady. Nervous lady. And okay. a nervous husband. A nervous game. <laughs> tranquil is not tranquil. <laughs> not at all. Ball spotted to the 17. 
second down and nine to go for Arkansas. Now that uh, sends Lubers off wide to the left. Shebest is not in there. And he splits out Eddie White, his tight end to the right side to give him two wide receivers. But he had that wishbone full house by field. Uh, there's a flag here. That was encroachment by Arkansas. Over here is this referee Wendell Shelton. So that's an automatic five-yard walk-off against Arkansas. You know what happened? Eddie White, who is supposedly a tight end number 28, and he goes out to the outside and he crossed the line of scrimmage. Then he came back. You're not allowed to do that. You can go out and move around as long as you don't go over the line of scrimmage. That time, Eddie White did that. They called a penalty on him, and they take louders out. Defense can do that if they get back before the snap. Exactly. Shebess is back in. Still out to the left side. He's a dangerous man. They got double coverage set up on him. Here's Arkansas. Here's Mel in the front looking for Shebess. Throws the end zone for Shebess. And it is no good. Shebess running the post pattern. That time Eric Wallace was back there. Had a good chance to intercept the ball. Eric Wallace was back there. But we had, I don't know if we had the wide shot on this or not. But I'm going to tell you something. There were five Navy people back there covering Shebess because he's been throwing it. Take a look at it. Nut gets hit after he delivers the ball. That's no problem there. But watch here. Here goes Shebest. And when it ends up back here, Eric Wallace, he slows down. He trips. Eric Wallace converges on the ball. But look at all the people downfield. Everybody is covering Shebest. Somebody's going to be open. Oops. There's a dog. <laughs> they made a note of number 25. The Navy defenders there. It's now third down, 14. Here's Nup. Needs a big play. Going to Shebest the corner. And it is incomplete. Almost a mistake by the Navy player uh, Wallace. He cut in front trying for the interception and missed it. And Shebest easily could have had a score on that play. Oh, twice we've seen the defensive backs make a mistake. This time Eric Wallace does. If he picks it off, he's got a lot of running room. Not strong, but watch Eric Wallace. He has a break on the ball, but he overruns the ball. Doesn't get his hand up. Got his hand in the face of Shebest. Look at, not, he's not happy. He says, wait a minute, if I hit you in the hands with the ball, you're supposed to catch it. I think what happened is that Wallace went off and screened the ball away from Shebest. He couldn't see it. Now the field goal and Trent will be 38 yards here by Greg Horn. He was four for six last week. Here's the plenty long enough. And it is good. Arkansas has moved ahead again with 9.49 to go in the first half of play for Little Rock. Arkansas six and Navy three. Well, so far, Navy's pretty well holding its own without Heisman candidates. McCallum, Arkansas with two field goals, edge back ahead 6-3. to three. Now Billy Real will kick off for the Razorbacks. Eric Wallace and Rich Klaus are deep at the goal line for Navy. 9.49 to go in the first half on a perfect football evening here in Ozark country of Arkansas. Another strip kick by Billy Real. And it's covered here by Navy man around the 23. I think it's John Burner, the fullback, number 28. So Navy will start inside its 31st and 10. They're spotted on the 28-yard line. Billy Real was the placement kicker for Arkansas. He missed the extra point last week, uh, week before, and he got fired and replaced by Horn, who promptly tied an Arkansas record with four field goals. That was uh, last week against Tulsa. And here... Horn has kicked two more tonight. Eric Salbar down at fullback. Here's the tailback bursting through. There goes Mark Smith. Uh, Mike Smith gets a good opening, but penalty flags fly everywhere. Greg Lasca made the stop. Franco's coming with fresh running backs, and Mike Smith a tailback, a sophomore from Ironton, Ohio, and Eric Sauerbray, a junior from Eastman, Georgia. A legal procedure against the Navy. That's going to cost them a sizable gain. Also, a legal use of the hands. Well, that could be a major penalty. Half the distance coming up against the midshipman. Well, that was some opening there. I'm telling you, Mike Smith just exploded through. Navy also has got its second line offensive lineman in. Frank B. Jack and Pat Hoffman are tackles. Chris Castelli and Mark Miller guards and Vic Tuttle. Or Vic Novati, Doug Roy's going to stay. Navy now five for nine passes, 58 yards. I like it. I'm looking for the big old Sal. They brought him out earlier. Big red, but they took him back in. That big hog. They don't let him out of that cage, do they? Now well, they take the long penalty, declining the illegal procedure. Half the distance back to the 11. 
So it'll be first down. They've got to go all the way to the 33-yard line. So it's first and 22 for the Navy. Back deep in the hole. There are the passing figures here for Bill Burns. In the backfield with him, Mike Smith and Eric Sarbre. 33 there is Chris Weiler. He's the split in. Great hands. He is much like James Shebest of Arkansas in that regard. Florida State leading Temple 21-6 in the second quarter. Florida State having a great year. South Carolina leading Georgia. That would be a surprise if the game cost can come back after Georgia beat the a week ago. Here's the pitch. Working wide left goes Smith. And Smith went out of territory around the 15. Not much of a game. Greg Gatson in at right cornerback for Arkansas on the stop. Big Red Six is the reigning Razorback here, and he is here. That's not him. Second down. That's a facsimile, but Big Red is here in his cage, subdued a little bit. They've had some of these uh, Big Reds down here have gotten loose and torn up the pea packs in the region farm. <laughs> one of the farmers cut loose with his shotgun and did away with it. Dropping his gun. Back to his own five. Goes a little short one on the middle of the spin. Mike Smith out of the backfield, doesn't get enough for a first down, stopped on the 20-yard line. Nick Miller, the linebacker, in there to cover that zone, and it'll be third down, about three and a half yards to go. Watch this defensive secondary drop. They're doubling up on both outside people. They're going with the, with the linebackers and the cornermen. No place to throw in there, so they have to dump the ball off. When you do that, it's in front of the linebackers. You're only going to pick up five or six. They dictate, when they run a defense like that, and they ran it as well as they did there at Arkansas, they dictate what Navy can do. Third and 13 to do. Third and 13 and a half, 14 yards on. Here goes Burns. Needs a long play. Little strip kick. And it is broken up. That ball was tipped by defender Raven Caldwell. And uh, it was almost taken by a Navy lineman. Now, lineman's eligible to catch the ball. Arkansas fans saying that was a lineman. But remember, that ball is tipped. That's a loose ball, free ball. Raven Caldwell, we talk about him, the wild man. Look at that. They come out to block him. I couldn't see who it was. I think it was the fullback. But Raven Caldwell is the man that hits the ball up in the air. He just got rid of the, of the offensive back, blocking him over top, and made the play. Here's a tough spot for Navy. Colby stands back inside his 10. Wide and Arkansas expects to get good field position. Oh, it's a great punt though. Driving wide, back pedaling inside his 35. Punch the 34 to the 40, and then he is hit with a crunching tackle around the 43-yard line where Arkansas will have it leading six to three over the Navy. Well, so far the super subs have been shining here in Little Rock. Danny Nutt replacing Brad Taylor. And Rich Clouser, who's filled in for McCallum for Navy. Here comes the option. Nut on the pitch out. Gets outside to Edmonds, and he is driven over the sidelines, close to the 45-yard line. Vince McBeth on the hit by Bobby Joe, Joe Edmonds, who may be the fastest of the Derek Arkansas halfbacks. Arkansas halfbacks are more the role of fullbacks physically than they are halfbacks. But this guy is a true halfback, elusive, explosive, with great speed. Three, Miller and Foreman, Tatum, seven. all power runners inside. And here's Edmonds coming off now, holding. Looks like he's holding his left uh, arm or left wrist. And Tatum has come back in the right halfback. Out of the wishbone, play action. Nut looking, fires off a little screen with a Miller. 45, Miller to midfield. Dan Rock to Navy territory. First down on the 47. Kirk McFarlane, the middle guard, stopping him. But Carl Miller gets another first down for Arkansas. They flooded, the, they flooded the area down, and watch Miller. He fakes to the right, comes back. This, this down, is a true Arkansas. screen pass. Can't see who the Navy player is on the outside coming up. Number 44, Eric Fudge. Even though he didn't make the play, made Miller cut back to the inside into the pursuit. Miller picks up the first down. Good running on Miller's part. At the Navy, 47. Danny now has a first down. Play action, take the pullback again. Not looking to see that. He's covered. Goes down the sideline to see that. Intercepted by Navy. But he comes down out of bounds. Does Vince McBeth put it in incomplete pass. McBeth grabbed it. Mike Erie put good pressure that time to Nut. And McBeth that time had Seabest covered perfectly. Boy, that was that was a nice interception out of bounds, though. But when you when Nutt should never throw that ball to Shebest in that situation because what they're doing, they're playing short and long. Eric Fudge is a defensive end, supposedly, but he plays that linebacker spot, backing off, playing short, 
And in that situation, you get McBath back there, and also they'll switch Wallace over on that side. They got Shebest out there on single coverage, and he is not going to Shebest down there, and it's incomplete. Well, a little bit high. They had Eric Wallace, man-for-man -man coverage on Shebest, and that saw it. And I think he checked off, Paul, at the line of scrimmage. You know, they're, they're running the plays, their pass patterns, Arkansas, just a little bit too deep. If you look at Eric Wallace, where Eric Wallace is playing anywhere from, oh, 10 yards to 11 yards off of Shebest. And once he, Shebest comes off the line of scrimmage, now Wallace is retreating. So if he goes down there anywhere from 8 to 10, that pass can be complete if they throw it quick. But with the play action in the pat backfield, you can't just stand up and throw the ball. Looks like Ken Rouser, a strong defense in the Navy's injured, Fuller's in there. Here's Nutt, takes out of the pocket, he's going to have to run with the ball, and he's pulled out behind the 40, short of the first down. Matt Kirby that time running down, Danny Nutt. As he tried to pick up long yardage on third down, will be fourth and three at the Navy 40. And we'll look for the Arkansas punter, Greg Horn, to come on the field. Now they're going to go, I think. Can I go for it? Oh, sure. Pretty good field position to give Navy. You bet three it point is. Lead. Navy's been pretty strong with good field position, but these coaches love to gamble, both of them. So Ken Hatfield's going to take a shot at it right here. Fourth and three at the Navy 40, leading by three. Foreman's back in there for them. Now they're going to try to pull Navy <laughs> off sides. And he tried to avoid the penalty. And the score, Arkansas 6, Navy 3. And we'll be right back. To look well, you're looking at a happy Greg Horn. The punting specialist for the University of Arkansas. And we'll show you why. Line of scrimmage at the Navy 40. Greg Horn pops this ball. It hits about the, oh, about the three, four yard line and bounces back. And Greg Horn is just standing there. Watch where the ball hits. And then it bounces back. And there are five Arkansas Razorbacks down there to fall on the ball. Navy's going to have the ball inside the two coming out. Well, Navy's really back in the hole now. That was a great punt by Greg Horn. Tranquil comes back in with his frontline offensive lineman. Gable, Long, Sears, Rhodes, Coombs, Stevens along the front. Burn, Klaus, Burner on the backfield with Wire and Hines at the wide spot. And they give it to Klaus, who just comes ninth in off tackle up close to the five yard line, tripped up by David Basil. <laughs> Trying to get a little room down there in case they have to kick on uh, fourth down. You know, you look at a play like that, and you think, well, if Klaus keeps his head up, he can go. He can go a little bit further with the ball, maybe pick up a first down. But the most important thing is that he's got to get his hands on the ball, wrap both arms around the gym, not to fumble down here, and just give them a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, turnover down here can be disaster. Second and eight, they give it to Klaus again. He tries the left side, nothing going. Arkansas met him with force at the five-yard line and stuck up the play. That'll be third down coming up. Dave, seven yards to David go. Basil, number 53, will come up over the top. Just take a look at it. Here comes Klaus in there. Watch 53 on the top. And he's sitting in a position to pop right there. No place for Klaus to go and just drives him back. That's good football position. He just got himself square with the line of scrimmage like the back is supposed to be when he goes through the hole. Met Klaus. No game. Arkansas coach Ken Hatfield said he's kicking game with something to hang his hat on. And it's put Navy in a bad spot. Here's Byrne to his own end zone. Byrne throwing the sidelines. Caught over there by Hines for a first down. What a clutch play that was. Ken Hines grabbing the sideline pattern from Bill Byrne, who had to lay it in there just perfectly, flirting with a disaster all the way. But he pulls it out. First and 10 for the midshipman. And believe me, that's a tough pass to throw because what's happening is Bill Byrne is running to his left and he's going to throw the ball with his right hand and also to hit Hine as he's going out, out of bounds. That's perfect. Couldn't put him any better. Well, they say to hit a player going away from him is one of the toughest passes to win. It is. There's the pick in the street to Klaus. Runs the short side of the field. Bumped over the sideline by Nick Miller and inside linebacker. Well, we have an interesting Nick score Miller here from Charleston, South Carolina. Pay oh. attention, Paul. Got it. East Tennessee, two. At the half, the Citadel six. Citadel kill Citadel Bulldogs. They'll kill them. That's Paul McGuire's <laughs> alma mater and doing well, thank you. Gain of two, second down and eight for the Navy. 
at their own 21 yard line. Arkansas leads six to three with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. The Little Rock, Arkansas, maybe trying to get out of the hole. Bill Byrne hit the clutch pass a moment ago. Now he runs the delay play. Here comes Klaus looking for room. Breaks through 30. First down, 32. Rich Klaus trying to make somebody forget Napoleon McCallum, which they never will at Navy. But he's having a fine evening here in his first start. It looks like a mix-up in the backfield because both the fullback and the halfback, Klaus is back there with Burner, but watch Klaus pick his way through. Not great speed. That's Nick Miller, 47, trying to make the tackle. He doesn't make it. Klaus picks up the first down. Navy on a drive. And Mike Smith now is coming replacing, giving Klaus a rest. First and 10, Navy. They come from their own two-yard line up to the 32. Here's a quick sideline pass to Hine. He grabs it short of the 40, taking down the 39. Ken Hine has suddenly become the key target for Bill Byrne, not Chris Weiler, who had been the top receiver. In the last game or so, I now has caught about three balls tonight. He had nine for 106 yards coming in and one touchdown. All right, they brought in Lobb now, number 84 wide receiver. They've got Hine out to the top side and Lobb at the bottom. And the tailback is given to Smith. Mike Smith cuts over the 45, trying to get the midfield. It'll be another first down for Navy. The midshipman now. Uh, rolling here against Arkansas, trailing by three points. A little over four minutes to go in the first half. Raven Caldwell in another play. Now the Hog fans love their football down here. And Arkansas's last tune-up before they get into the Southwest Conference. Don Hughes is in as a wide receiver to the left side. Rolling his burn, looking back to Hughes. Over the middle, he goes to Hughes. It'll be way long. He may have seen Hughes completely covered back here by Greg Gatson. Cherry Cole was also putting some pressure in the face of Byrne. An incomplete pass in the event. And it'll be second down and 10 coming up for Navy at their own 48. Stops the clock with 4.11 to go. Next week, Navy will go to Air Force, which is one of the first of its Arch Academy rivals. But he played this year, and Arkansas will be going in the Southwest Conference action. Burn on second and ten. Caldwell coming. Burn drills that ball complete at the 40-yard line. Here's Hines still on his feet. Fumbles the ball. Navy recovers on the 35. Mike Smith was down there to cover the loose ball. Nick Miller knocked it loose from Hines, but Navy hangs on and will have a first down at the 35-yard line of Arkansas. And we get a timeout. Looks like an Arkansas player was shaken up on the play. But the Navy bid shipment are happy over this one. Boy, he's drilled this one in there, Paul. Well, Bill Byrne dr drills it into Hines. Just take a look at Hines getting the ball away. But on the back side, he's going to take a shot. The ball pops out, and Smith is going to be right there to fall on the ball. Break for Navy. Exactly four minutes to go in the first half. Arkansas 6, Navy 3, but Navy moving. <laughs> Navy's come all the way from its own two-yard line, mainly on the passing of Bill Byrne, the sophomore right-hander from Pacific of California. There he is, number 15. They're down the Arkansas 35, first and 10. Here's a fake. Here comes the reverse. Running is Hughes. Hughes coming behind the block at the 30. Penalty flag is down. Hughes is about 10 yards down to the 25-yard line, but hold everything. Penalty marker down. This could go against Navy here on some kind of illegal procedure. Kevin Wyatt was over there defensively for Arkansas. Watts, uh, referee, Wendon Shelton, holding Navy. Well, they'll lose the 10 yards plus 15 more, and that's going to be a costly play indeed against the midshipmen who had had a first down at the Arkansas 35. Isn't that a shame when you waste a play that you've been saving through a whole ball game, a well, whole first half anyway, there's 3.37 to go in this second quarter. And you have to waste a play. It's a 10-yard penalty. The swing of 20 yards, Paul. The 10 they didn't get on the game. The 10 on the penalty. Become first and 20. It also takes them out of field goal range for the moment, but they definitely would have been at the 20. Now out to the left side goes Ken Hine. He's been the key receiver here for Bill Byrne this March. First down play, up the middle of the goal to Burner, the fullback. He struggles for a short gain, two or three yards. Wrapped up in the Arkansas defense. The clock now rolling with three minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half. 
halftime. We'll have all the scores and reports from you from on the carry. around the nation today, and there have been some big Six surprises. Rodney, so, Dixon, and also at halftime, we'll take a look at some of the heartaches of the Heisman Trophy candidates for 1984. Jimmy, you got to go back to that big tight end, Mark Stevens, because Laster number, Greg Laster number three, is covering him man to man. Here's Burn. Second down. Going to the sideline. Hines wide open. Drops it. Oh, Hines was wide open at the 25 yard line for a first down. Perfectly thrown ball. Hines, I think, was looking around to see how much room he had. Look what happened. Even great teams can't do this. You have a holding penalty on a reverse. It brings it back. You have the first down. Look at Hines. He is wide open downfield. Jones is there with it. No problem at all. The ball hits him right in the hands, just not concentrating on the football. There is pressure on the quarterback. That's Beecham 99 coming in on the outside, but but Bill Byrne had time to throw the football. When he hits your man, that can bring you down. Davies hit three out of seven third downs, but they have to pick up 17 yards on this one. Third and 17. Sideline to his hind again. He gets it this time to the first down inside the 25. So Byrne, with great confidence in Hines, calls his number again, goes right back to 81, the senior. And the big Richmond, Virginia receiver steps out of bounds, one yard beyond the mark. Well, he's going be behind the rover 15, who is Jones, and in front of Wyatt, number seven, who is the corner. The Jones, the rover man, he's not getting there. He's got to get to the outside, play that man. I know he's waiting for him to come across the middle, but when Hines doesn't do that, you've got to fly. Maybe now in field goal range, but hoping for more with two and a half minutes to go in the half. But trading by three points. Tailback foul is thrown at the 25. Loss of a yard. It'll be second and 11. That big defensive play by David Basil and Gerald Jones. Jones has come back into service this week for Arkansas. He's been on the injured list. 226 pounds junior. From Cabot, Arkansas. And he's in spelling Frankie Lisco right now. Right tackle for the Razorbacks. Both these uh, teams have injured players out. Centers, the most dangerous receiver Arkansas is out in recent years, quarterback. Baron on drop on second down, throws again, and he's got his man. It'll be a touchdown, I believe, for his blood. John Lau with a fingertip catch, scores for Navy, and for the first time, the midshipmen take the lead by a score of 9-6. to six. We are seeing mistakes by secondary people, mostly corners. Kevin Anderson, number two that time, went for the ball again. Didn't hit Lobb. Lobb, concentration on the football. Surprising Navy just interchanging their wide receivers between Wheeler, Lobb, Hein, Franklin, that time number 82, was also in the ball game. That was Lobb's first collegiate touchdown. Now the tribe of the point is Solomon. And the kick is good. Now with less than two minutes to go, Navy up its lead now to 10 to 6. All right, we're well, going to see it on the outside now. Kevin Anderson, number two, is the defensive back out there on lob. Take a look at it. They had the tight end coming underneath Mark Stevens. But here you are. You go through looking for the ball and not making a tackle. You have to play the receiver. If you don't do that, this is what happens. All right, one minute, 50 seconds to go in the first half, and Navy has taken the lead. Two more national football powers take the field for College Showdown Saturday, October 6th. You'll see it exclusively here on ESPN when Miami meets Notre Dame live. Last year's defending national champions, quarterbacked again by Bernie Kozar, had a shocking loss to the hands of Florida State. They'll try to bounce back. Notre Dame survives a scare from Missouri today. Alan Pickett is their Heisman Trophy candidate. He's running wild. All that next week, Saturday, October 6th, live on your source for sports, ESPN. I called you'll be up in Buffalo celebrating a little 25th anniversary team. Yes, looking forward to seeing my old teammates come back to Buffalo. Look at this trick over here. Well, that uh, certainly is a happy guy for Navy. John Lobb has just scored his first collegiate touchdown of his career from Magnolia, Kentucky. He's a spunky little guy, only 175 pounds. We had a penalty on the extra point, a 15-yard penalty, and it's going to give Navy the opportunity. And here's, here's again, Jim, yeah. where they get penalized in that rule in college football. If the ball is kicked out of the end zone, on the fly, then the ball comes out to the 30. Well, what you do in a situation like this is just put it on the ground, get it between some players so they can't pick up the ball right away, and it gives your people time to get down there. The Navy kicker, Todd Solomon, has gone over near the left hash mark. And we may see some kind of a squib kick here, angle across field, and they might try to get Arkansas back in a hole. 
Ten to six, Navy leads. One minute, 50 seconds to go. Arkansas led three nothing. Tied three three. Arkansas led six three. Now Navy leads. So it's been an exciting first half. They, uh, they try the onside kick. It's a pretty good play down here because they give up the ball to Arkansas on the 32. Had the kick at the stands, they get it on the 30. So that's a gamble worth taking. Well, I still, I, I'm not going to agree with that. I'm going to tell you why I don't agree with that. You're giving, you're giving Arkansas excellent field position. I know you got something to read. We'll get back to it. Go ahead. We'll tell you about the hardship of the Heisman hopefuls. Coming up at halftime, look at some of the hardships. Of course, the Navy fans relate to that because of Napoleon McCallum. But so do Auburn fans. Bo Jackson's out. Bill Fralick's chances seem to be going out the window with the Panthers 0-4. So there are a lot of others and some new ones coming into the uh, scene. So join us at halftime for that and the score. There you saw the scoring drive. They run the delay now and the drop the middle to Derek Thomas. Thomas uh, gets maybe six. Clock continues to roll the minute 40 to go. What I was going to say about that, the onside kick in that situation, giving Arkansas the ball at the 33, when you can, can pop that ball across field like you suggested the first time, or squib it down the middle where they can't get a return, don't give them that extra yardage. That's what I'm talking about. You're giving them good field position, and they've got some timeouts to work with. Well, what I was talking about, the gamble is, if you win it, you really get something good. Back is nothing. That goes off a little screen to the right side, and he's got Perry Tatum over there, and Tatum makes it for a first down to the 45. The clock shows a minute 10 to go, and Arkansas is going to have to get to the air long if they want to get downfield. They have to get down around the 30, somewhere between the 30 and 35 yard line. The range for Greg Horn's about 50 yards. That means you'll have to kick it from the Navy 40 to pick up three points. All right, here's where they break the bone, right here, when they're throwing down. This is the flex play. Up the middle to go. They got a man open down there. Boy, is he smacked down. I think that's Ludens. That's Macbeth. That was Shebest. James Shebest. Arkansas has all its timeouts remaining. We're inside the minute now. 55 seconds. Razorbacks hurrying up here. They're getting down close. Have to pick up only about another first down. They'll be on field goal range. The way Horn's been kicking, it looks like he's in field goal range now. He's yeah. been hitting the ball well. Now there's the flex boom. You see the halfback set wide. Here's Nutt. Sideline again. He's got Edmonds. Bobby Joe Edmonds steps out of bounds, killing the clock with 48 seconds to go, and they're very definitely are uh, getting down toward in uh, field goal range. That's another pickup of five to make it second and five on the 34. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just get frustrated sometimes when you sit up here and you watch Navy's defense. They've been doing a good job holding Arkansas to only six points so far in the first half. Now they're letting him throw anything they want to throw short, and they're letting him get in the field goal range. Of course, that will only bring him up to nine. It'll be 10-9 at the half. Ken Hatfield just put in his fastest tight end, Theo Young. See what he has in mind. That's Theo Shebeck wide open, isolated, and five to 30, and down on the 27. Boy, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage there with Eric Wallace. That was Wallace against Shebeck. That's the best against the best as far as these teams are concerned in that situation. She does the best receiver for Arkansas. Wallace the best defender for Navy. Now there are 41 seconds to go. And here's Nutt. And he just rounds the ball, killing the clock, throwing it right at the feet of Bobby Joe Edmonds. And with 38 seconds to go, Navy can kind of settle up here. They still have three timeouts to call. Yeah, I don't understand the play. See, I don't understand why you, why you, why you throw a play like that. Let's take a look at the scoring summary. We'll get back to it. Go ahead. All right, the first quarter, Horn kicked the field goal with 12 minutes to go after Arkansas's second possession. 25 yards, Arkansas led 3 nothing. Navy came back to score it. A long pass set it up. That was to Horn. Then Horn kicked the field goal. It was still 6-3 on, on the second one, and now Navy's taking the lead. Not chased out a punt. That's going to have to run with it, and he ducks in the coverage inside the 25, down to the 24. Now less than 30 seconds to go before Arkansas calls its first timeout. Arkansas is right there to where they could go for the field goal, but it's only third down coming up. All right, now in the second quarter, pick up more scoring. 25-yard pass play from Byrne to Lobb, which was John Lobb's first collegiate touchdown of his career. And Navy led for the first time. That's what it is right now. Navy 10, Arkansas 6. Okay, I'm not coaching, but I don't understand why on first down, <clears throat> when you have three timeouts, you're moving the ball. Why you would take a play and throw the ball into the dirt, waste it down. Second time they go back to pass, not as rushed. He's got to run with the ball. They've got third down and about eight yards to go. They wasted a play. They still have two timeouts. They've taken one. 
Yeah, that part of it doesn't make sense to me. You, your team is moving. Settle them down a little bit. Don't make a major mistake. What you get, what you have to do, which is imperative, you've got to get at least three points out of this drive. Not, you want the touchdown naturally, but you want to at least get three points. Don't take yourself out of field position. Don't make a mistake. Now, in this situation here, Nut, with two timeouts remaining, if something doesn't go right, go ahead and take that second timeout because you still have that final timeout for your field goal kicker to get on the field. Just under a half minute. Not third down. Over 100 yards. Not down the five. That's intercepted by Navy, then dropped. All right, the Navy man Fudge, Eric Fudge, who dropped off as an end, had it. Now, Arkansas is trying to... Uh, Claim there was interference on the play, but I thought Fudge was right there for the interception, just couldn't hold it. Flag was dropped on the far side of the field, away from all of that action. And there's the official ref for decision or discussion. Wendell Shelton will give us the signal. Holding against Navy. Holding on the defense. Another break for Arkansas with 24 seconds to go. And this is going to push the Razorbacks in a little closer. You saw the beginning of the explanation there. The Navy coach Gary Trenko. And an uh, interesting and uh, I think pleasant debut as you're starting with for Danny Nutt as far as Ken Hatfield is concerned. Passed for over 100 yards and he has the Razorbacks in position here to regain the lead in the final seconds of the first half. It'll be a first down for Navy 14. Rodney Fort was about to come in, but now he comes back off. So Nutt goes out there. He's got Tatum at one half, Miller at the other, fullback is Foreman, wide receivers, Theo Young is in there, and here comes the draw play, and they run the Foreman to the 10, and he's through to the 7. Marshall Foreman, Arkansas caught Navy looking for the pass, and they sprung Foreman for a nifty game of about 7 yards. 17 seconds to go, Arkansas uses another timeout, killing the clock. Now they've got time to get in for the touchdown. That's smart timeout, that point there. They don't have the first down. It'll be second and about three. But you're on a drive. You've got 17 seconds. They still have that remaining timeout. With 17 seconds, they've got two opportunities now, Jim, to throw the ball towards the end zone. All right, at the end of the game, Paul and I will be uh, picking the Chevrolet players of the game for the Chevrolet sponsorship program. Chevrolet then will honor these selections, donating $1,000 to each cottage's general scholarship fund. That will help advance educations of deserving students. And it's the 14th year for this program, and ESPN is proud to be now taking part. Well, Danny Nutt is over-talking with Ken Hatfield, the offensive man. Nutt, who came out of junior college, Central Arkansas, a native of Little Rock, back here among the home fans. A lot of fans remember his brother Houston, who was a quarterback here before he transferred to Oklahoma State. So he comes out of the football family. Navy leads 10 to 6. Arkansas knocking at the Navy 7. Second down and three. Arkansas fans are wound up, and here we go. Hubeck wide to the right. And it looks like single coverage over there with Wallace. Here comes Nutt. Nutt is looking. Not fine. Nutt's going to run. Not by the end zone. Too bad. Touchdown. Well, you can only cover the good one so long. Actually, this is a broken play because. Danny Nutt was looking to the other side for Young, number 87, the tight end. And he found Chibest after he was scrambling in the end zone. We'll get back. Greg Horn to try to the point after. Boots it right through there. Arkansas up by three. But watch Nutt borrow time with his scrambling here for Chibest to get away from his man. All right, there's Wallace. Nutt. He's scrambling to the outside, and Chibest is running away from Eric Wallace. But look at the catch. Just fingertip control. You see Wallace is taken back to the inside. The man number 87, Young, was the man that he was looking at. Watch Nutt look to his left. There's where Young was over there. Young is covered. So now he's going to come back. He's moving out, telling Shebest to move along the backside of the end zone, running away from Eric Wallace, but look at the catch. The ball's out in front. Beautiful. All right, let him perfectly, Paul. Can't do it any better. No chance for an interception. 
And so Arkansas has gotten its first touchdown of the night. Comes on a pass from Nut to James Seabest, and that's been the number one weapon for the Razorbacks. Arkansas back in the lead, 13 to 10. Navy will have only nine seconds, and don't look for an onside kick here. <laughs> but I, I would imagine they'll keep it along the ground, though. They don't want Wallace to pick it up. That's Ernie Villarreal, one of the two kicking specialists for Arkansas. The other one being Greg Horn. There's Wallace. Excellent player from Hampton, Virginia. He can break the big one. He went 95 yards against the Army. Longest Navy kickoff in history. Kickoff return. There's the squib kick, and the up back, Stevens, tight end, takes all that Klaus, Klaus, and he comes up over the 435. Rich Klaus to the 37. And the clock shows time, perhaps for one play with four seconds to go. Navy's going to get one shot at it at their 37 yard line. Trailing by three. Well, the way Ken Hine was running out on the field, number 81, the flanker. You're not that excited unless they're going to throw the ball to you. <laughs> just a deep pattern. You flood the zone and just let it fly. Arkansas, they're going to back up inside the 35 yard line. They'll take Laster. Well, look at Florida State. They're rolling past Temple. Temple coming down a little bit after that high beating pit. Now, play action. I don't for that. Burn. Burn going for the home run, and he's going out of bounds intended for Weiler as time runs out in the first half of an exciting affair here in Little Rock, Arkansas, between the Razorbacks and the midshipmen. Back and forth they have gone as we reach halftime. A three point lead for the home team, the University of Arkansas. So that's the end of the first half. Arkansas 13. And Navy 10. A touchdown. Arkansas had two field goals and Navy won. That's been the difference. And the capacity crowd here has been excited and thrilled from the very beginning. Navy the underdog because they came in here. Here's what's happened. First possession, they started their own 27. Then lost to the, when they tried a fourth down later after picking up two or three first downs. Then they had the punt. Was down here in the third uh, possession. They wound up on the field goal. Then the fifth time they got the ball at their own two-yard line, they drove 98 yards to score a touchdown and went ahead only to have Arkansas come back. But when you take a look at Arkansas, Jim, look at their field possession at the beginning. 34, 36, 31, 43, 32. Excellent field position. They punted. When, you, when Navy held them to two field goals in their second and third possession, that gave a, gave a boost to Navy. Of course, that last touchdown just before the half, we'll find out, because Arkansas gets the ball back, how much did that brought Navy down? I don't think it did. Well, we'll see what happens in the second half. Teams will come back on the field. Arkansas will get the ball to start in the third period. Remember, they won the toss. And they decided to wait till the halftime to exercise the option and let Navy have the option. Navy took the ball to start the game. Here's the quarterback comparison so far between Danny Nutt, who was pressed into service with Brad Taylor, Arkansas's outstanding quarterback was injured, against sophomore Bill Byrne. Well, you know, I look at Bill Byrne came back and he threw the ball extremely well. Ken Hine, he's got six or seven catches in the first half. You know they're going to go to him. And on the other side of the coin, when you look at Arkansas, the man they like to throw to is Shebest, who caught a touchdown pass. But I think you're going to have to look at some other people in the second half because Navy's going to make an adjustment. At least I think they will, and so will Arkansas. Well, Ken Hatfield's had some interesting statistics. He's been a winner. He built a winner at the Air Force before he came back here to his alma mater. First year, he took over the Falcons, 1979. Losing season, about the same thing in 1980. Then he began to bring in some players and change the thing around. By 1982, had a winning season, 8-5, and, and won the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then last year, he won 10 ball games, won the Independence Bowl, and became Coach of the Year. And that was enough to bring him back here. As a matter of fact, he coached his team at Air Force against Notre Dame and upset them. The game was being televised by ABC, and Frank Broyles was one of the announcers, and he must have said, I want that guy back in Arkansas. So here he is. He's a good one. Nice and man. He certainly is. Uh, one of the most popular men here you'll ever find, where he led the nation in a punt return to 1964. And his old teammates were here to help celebrate that homecoming here tonight. Arkansas will receive... Back deep will be Kevin White for the Razorbacks and kicking off. Todd Sullivan for the Navy and the second half is underway as White comes up under the eight yard line and takes it right there to the 20. 
And he's collared and taken down at the 24-yard line. That's where Arkansas will begin. I think, Paul, this will be about the deepest point from where they have begun any possession. Certainly is. Now we'll see what happens. In, I've got to look at, let me just end it for a second before you set this. Arkansas, if they look in the first half, listen to the coaches upstairs, they know that they can throw the ball in the short intermediate routes, the 8 to 10-yard routes outside because you got Wallace covering Shebest by himself. Same thing's going to happen with Navy. They can see the short stuff is there. I just wonder now they're going to attack it. Bobby Joe Edmonds opening up the second half at halfback. I don't think Carl Miller's in there. Tatum is in. Here's the fake the fullback nut now on the pitch. Back to Tatum. It is Tatum. Ring run wild. Navy strung it out. He did a good job over there. Joe Papetti did from his rover back spot. And he stopped the play for no appreciable gain. Maybe a yard or so just over the 25. Terry Tatum, a junior, celebrating his birthday today. He's 20 years old, born on September 29th, back in 1964, the year that Hatfield was such a star here for Arkansas. Scored 51 touchdowns in high school, but is yet to score a touchdown in uh, college. So this young junior looking forward to this season. Second down, nine to go for Arkansas. They give him a fullback on a slant. He picks up close to four yards. Foreman comes up to the 30. Marshall Foreman on the carry. Arkansas came here, really didn't have the material to play the eye formation. That's why I think they went to the wishbone. All right, there's Rutherford right there, the defensive tackle. He is being double teamed by Williams and Erie. And when that happens, there ain't much you can do, you know. Third and five, key possession play here for Arkansas. Mark Cal Cagney is in there, the wide receiver spot. They run the option play to the right side. There's the pitch back to Tatum, and Tatum breaks the tackle and gets the first down. Oh, what a nifty bit of running by Tatum. It looked like he was going to be trapped behind the line. Broke the tackle of Eric Fudge and got loose for the first down and turned the corner. A big play. Eric Fudge almost makes a great play. He's being blocked on the outside. You see Nutt come down. There's Tatum there. Fudge is right there. He just can't get his arms around the strong back. But watch the shot you take when you just <laughs> kind of run relaxed and you're going out of bounds. Fuller number 40 nailed. Tatum. A little bit chilly here in Arkansas. Temperatures getting down in the 40s now, about now. But it's been a, certainly been a perfect evening of football, uh, weather-wise for football. 13-10 Arkansas leads. That's the first down for them up to the 39. And here's the give to the fullback in the middle. And mile ball might have gotten loose the way they scrambled for it. Foreman didn't get much of a crack that time. Stacked up around the 41-yard line, Ford hitting it first, John carry. Fuller, and Ron Zaleski, who got the starting call at left tackle ahead of Matt Kirby by Bobby Morrison, who's the defensive two, coordinator for Navy. Eight. Zaleski is a senior, 247, from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. As a matter of fact, Pennsylvania leads all other states in placing players on the Navy team. Ohio running second. Two pretty good football states. That's right. Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> Cal you Cagney that. playing for Arkansas, number 18, Youngstown, Ohio. Take on the play action. Nut now looking back to the side, throws a little screen over there to Edmonds. Makes a nice hit step. Gets away from one tackler and gets a good game. Up over the 45. Bobby Joe Edmonds showing some of the elusiveness he has. Eluded the tackler at about the line of scrimmage. And before Schillmeyer could catch him, he was up for a good game. Jim, Carl Miller, number 30, who had a good first half. Got a, he has a bruised thigh, and we have the word that he will not be back for Arkansas. Well, that's why Bobby Joe Edmonds is in there. He's replaced Miller at uh, left halfback. Third down conversions. Arkansas now four out of eight, and they're facing third and one, and they give it on a crossing play to Tatum, and he won't make oh, it. Oh, no. Well, that's a solid tackle by Vince McBeth. A weak cornerbacker, Macbeth really put a shoulder on Tatum when it looked like he would celebrate his birthday once more. All right, they're going out towards Elliott and McGee on the outs on the top side. Just take a look at it, and, and you watch number 19, Macbeth, come into the play. Here's how to play corner, come up and make a play. Watch this. He's going to tackle Tatum right here, coming to the outside, puts his head right in the numbers, no first down. And let me tell you something. Vince McBeth, the only player from Arkansas on the Navy team. You think he isn't happy to come <laughs> Back to punt for Arkansas is Greg Horn. Double safety set up back here for Navy. Eric Wallace is back there. High punt. Wallace going to let it hit over. All right, it's going to take an Arkansas bounce. And it's going to be touchdown, I think, around the four-yard line. 
Once more, Arkansas put Navy in a deep hole inside the five-yard line. Bull with the score, 13 Navy 10. It's Navy versus Arkansas in tonight's CFA action. Brought to you by Chevrolet. With the technology, the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality and value to make up today's Chevrolet. Once more, Navy back deep in a hole. The last time they were back there, Gary Tranquil's team drove 98 yards to score. Let's see what they can do from their own five-yard line. Give it off the halfback, and I think Klaus is going for loss of a yard. Great play by Tony Cherico. The freshman nose guard from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. And he made a good stop there. Red shirt freshman. Yeah, we love Arkansas. And Hatfield and the Hawks. He's one of them. You know, he's close from the Hatfield McCoy family line. That's right. Hatfield, Kenny's grandmother died a couple of years ago, over 100 years old. Second down, 11. Up the middle of the count. Squirting through there is Klaus. Almost got a crack in the defense. Gary Lasker tipped him up. Another step. And a bit of belonging, but he spotted at the nine. Look now at third and six. Raven Caldwell is trying to crash down the inside. And when he did that, Basil, number 53, goes along with him. They just took two players out and only had blocking with two players. Looked like a double team on Caldwell, but they also picked up Basil. Here comes a substitute in the backfield late is Mike Smith. Klaus trying to get off the field. Navy facing third down and six inside its own 10-yard line. And they go to Smith. He flies the middle. He won't make it. Arkansas stops him at the 12. David Basil, Arkansas now will set up expecting to get very good field position here early in the third period with a four-point, three-point lead, 13 to 10. The Navy couldn't get it out of a hole that time. And the midshipmen have their punter, Mark Colby, in there, senior from Sandusky, Michigan. Third year. Casey hits a real long one. Needs one here. And he gets a dandy. High hanging up there back in the 44-yard line. Here's the return by White. And he's looking for room. And now it's Badman's. And he's over the 45 of Navy. Out of bounds in the 43. Good field position for Arkansas as they lead it by a score of 13 to 10. This is today's Chevrolet. Come on in. Take the wheel. Arkansas leading Navy 13 to 10. We've had some big surprises today. Nebraska upset by Syracuse. Clemson lost to Georgia Tech. And look at this one. South Carolina Gamecocks have upset Georgia 17 to 10 in the wake of Georgia's win over Clemson. Boy, you think the Gamecocks won't be crawling down there in South Carolina country. You went to school down in Citadel, Paul. You know how that rivalry is. Yeah, they, we never played South Carolina. They were too small for us at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear about that. Here's a play activated by Nutt on the option. He's going to fake, and Nutt's going to be taken down after a long run laterally with nothing upfield. Stop for no gain, I believe, by Schulmeyer and Papetti of the Navy. This is the, actually the way to play the wishbone. We have, is that Papetti the turn? We got Papetti, I think, down on the field. Is, no, I think it's Schulmeyer. No, Schulmeyer is down on the field. Schilmauer was a converted tight end, which will give you an idea of the shallow depth that Navy had at linebacker. They lost their great player, Andy Ponciego, last year. Let's see if we can see what happened, Paul. Well, if we're going to take a look at it, watch how Navy plays the wishbone. Bang, they stop right there for me. Okay, now, now it's got to come down the field. They're playing him. Papetti is right there with him. Schilmauer is 87 on the right of your screen. I don't see right there where he gets hit, but... Then his own man hits him in the, in, in, the, in the side. Paul, the key to that play, Eric Wallace shut off the pitch to Edmonds. 
He played Edmonds man for man. He shut off the pitch. He forced Nuff to run the ball. Exactly. When everybody, every, when everyone's covered, you have no place to go. Doman is going to replace Schilmeyer. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's got a man open. Wide open. They see that. Oh, there. Touchdown for Arkansas. There's the big play combination again for Arkansas. Danny Nutt to James Shebest connects for its second touchdown of this game. Arkansas opens up some breathing room now at 19 to 10. I haven't seen a guy open that wide <laughs> in a long time, my friend. Well, Navy almost had uh, their man Klaus that open against North Carolina, but it's a different type play. Horn in for the kick after, perfect. Arkansas up its lead to 10 points now, biggest lead of the game. 9.38 to go in the third period. Arkansas 20, Navy 10. A happy James Shebest has gotten his second touchdown reception of the night. Arkansas now has a little breathing room for the first time. 10 point lead, 20 to 10. This is far over. 9.38 up the third period. Billy Real will kick off for the Razorbacks, Rich Klaus. Eric Wallace with the deep in A. Another good kick. Good fire out of this band. And here's Klaus in the run at the point. 25. Almost lost his foot. He's looking for a block. Klaus needs one more block. 35 40. And he's down on the 44. Great running by Rich Klaus. All right, let's look at the touchdown. First of all, the fake to Marshall Foreman up, up there, and it freezes the line of scrimmage. All right, now we're going to see she best come downfield. And I'm going to explain at the end. You see 41 right there, Furley? Now, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. She best is going to be wide open for the touchdown. There's absolutely no one around him. He can wait on the ball, make sure he makes the catch, and there's Furley number 41. On this third one, here we're going to see Furley. Now, watch 41. His job is to come over, take a look at she best. When she best breaks up field, he's got to run with him. When you don't do that, there's no one else back there to cover him because Eric Wallace is playing short and playing the run. Well, it was a nifty pattern, and Arkansas, by virtue of it, has widened its lead to 10 points. Chad Van Hulsen was shaken up a little bit on the kickoff for Navy, but that was a brilliant return there by Rich Klaus, and Navy gets good field position for the, one of the few times they've had it. Up now is 11 out of 19 for 159 yards, two touchdowns, and as he filled in for the engine quarterback, Brad Taylor, on the run. Here it is, caught out here. Beautiful running pass. John Burner out of the backfield. Basil and Jones team up for Arkansas, but Navy comes out throwing. First down. And going to need gain into Arkansas territory. But they're Jones. popping some pants in now, Paul. Jones and Burner are both hurt. The fullback coming out of the backfield. Now watch this. Burn throws it to Burner, 28. Jones, Nathan Jones is coming in number 20. Watch what happens. They both go down. They hit head in the head, and they're both on the field. Watch this. Here's the play. There's Burner coming out the fullback out of the backfield. Now 53 Ooh. Basil is there, but the, they both hit head to head, and they're both on the field. That's been a hard played game, and right now it's Arkansas 20 and Navy 10. They got a measure here for a first down for Navy. The Navy fullback, Burner, came off the field, seemed to be all right. And the player was taken out for Arkansas was just short of a first down with a play into the line. It'll be third down, the second down coming up, and inches to go for first down, third down. Third down upcoming, inches to go. Had one play in the line there, didn't see. They just almost made the first down. 8.51 on the clock to go. Navy has hit four out of nine third down conversions. Next week, Notre Dame and Miami. You'll see Kozar again, a great passing circus for Miami. And Alan Pickett for Notre Dame. The Irish scored another victory. They come back strong after that opening loss to Purdue. Notre Dame climbing up the poles. Well, they'll seek a shake up of the poles as they look for Texas to number one. Here's Navy. Quarterback sneak by Byrne, and he's got the first down. Close to the 45 of Arkansas. Jim Nathan Jones, the number 20 for Arkansas that was shaken up on that play with Burner. Uh, he came off, he was helped off the field, but he is walking around the sidelines and he looks to be all right. That play we just saw is, uh, exemplifies Navy's strength, which is right in the middle. Mark Long, 
Doug Rhodes, Greg Sears. That's the strength of the Navy team. Two guards in center. Now he's a double fake. Burn throwing into a crowd, and he's hit his man Stevens, who cannot hold on to it. Greg Lasker was down there and broke up the play. Stevens was completely surrounded, and he is slow in getting up. That must have been three or four Arkansas defenders, and Byrne threw it into town, and Pauley almost completed it. Mark Stevens coming down. Now, he's one-on-one, -on -one, I think, with Lasker. Is that number three? Yes, it is. It's Lasker. Watch Lasker go for the ball. Not only is he hit there, but Mark Lee, number 22, collides into his ribs. That cheer is not because Mark Stevens is on the ground. They are doing the wave here. Everybody seems to be doing all around the country. The wave chair started up in Washington, I think, Paul. Washington, Washington State a few years ago. Big on the West Coast. And now here it is in Arkansas. And Mark Stevens stirring around. So we'll remind you further about next week. Two football powers showing down on October 6th here on ESPN. Miami versus Notre Dame. There's the wave. And you'll see Bernie Kozar, sophomore sensation, one of the men in the running for the Heisman Trophy against Alan Pickett and Notre Dame. Let's look again at that play. All right, Mark Stevens. Mark Lee is the guy that's going to hit him in the ribs at that time. Lasker is there, number three, also. The ball, you, as you said before, Jim, was on target. The ball hit him in the hand. Well, while we wait here, let's take a look at some other scores around the country tonight. Miami warming up for Notre Dame, romping over Rice, 31 to 3. We'll see Miami and Kozar next week against Notre Dame here on ESPN. Citadel continues to lead East Tennessee Buccaneers, hey, 6 to 2 go get in the fourth quarter. Ohio State, they're climbing up the poles over Lou Holt, who used to be here in Minnesota. In the third quarter, Arkansas leads 20 to 10. Burn back for Navy. Plenty of time. Burn sidelines, and it's incomplete. Intended for Ken High. Hine, who was a key receiver in the first half, covered by Gerald Jones putting pressure that time on Byrne. That'll bring up third down and 10 now. The Navy 45. Arkansas defense has stiffened here after Navy crossed midfield. Eight minutes yet to go in the third period. A lot of time remaining. Hine goes wide to the left. John Lodge comes off to the right. Arkansas fans are roaring here with a team ahead. There's Byrne. Byrne in the pocket. Drills it, and it is caught by La, but not a first down. John Lott came back on a curl pattern. Button hook down there on the 37. Caught the ball, but didn't get the first down. Well, remember, Navy went in the first quarter on fourth down in, in three yards. I would imagine they're going to do it again. Trailing by 10, we told you at the outset. Not only Ken Hatfield, but Gary Trunkel is up one of a riverboat gambler. So they'll go for it. Burner's in there at fullback, so he has come back. Hine is wide to the left. Lob is to the right. They need three yards. Fourth down pass. And there it is. And it is caught, I believe, by the incomplete. Incomplete pass. Klaus cannot hold on to it. Get a little juggling back, and Arkansas will pick over. Calvin Williams was in there to put pressure to the pass at that time for Arkansas. And the Razorback fans are going wild in Little Rock. You know why this pass was not completed? Because Bill Byrne tried to guide the ball. Watch this. Instead of turning around and throw it, he just tried to guide the ball into, into Klaus. And the ball was low. Klaus had to go down for it. Couldn't hold on to his hands. It hit him in the hands. He should have caught it. But instead of just flat out throwing the ball, he didn't do that. Arkansas takes over on downs. They try the full back up the middle. Dirk McFarland stops that for no gain. Second down, 10 coming up. The ball at the 38-yard line of Arkansas. First year here for head coach Ken Hatfield, who took over on the carry. from Lou Holtz, who moved on to Minnesota. Hatfield had built the national power at the Air Force, and he's back home. Defense getting a rest for Arkansas. No gain, second and 10. What Navy had hoped to do, but here in the second half, the tide's turning toward Arkansas. They now lead 20 to 10. Second down play. Gonna get it to the fullback. Ball, 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 ball. Navy may no. have it. Who's gonna get it? <laughs> ball is still loose. Navy thinks they have it. Have not had a turnover yet. This could Don't be one. On Navy players say we've got it, and it is. Navy's football. First turnover of the game, and they get it to the Arkansas 41. That ball was popping around, and I thought Rutherford had a chance at a first number 78. Now here's the ball. Thomas now whether he was supposed to take it or not we don't know the shot is made inside 
And then Rutherford had a shot at the ball. The ball squirted out. They're kicking around. The offensive linemen don't really know where to go <laughs> because the ball's at their feet. Navy gets it. McFarland? Yep, certainly McFarland, the nose guard, finally came up with it for Navy. Well, Arkansas defense, here's the bootleg. Look for the tight end. There they throw. They got the tight end. Grabbed by Sniffin, and he's down inside the 30-yard line. Boy, Navy loves that pattern. They use a naked roll out of the quarterback. Has no blockers in front of him. And then they bring the tight end across in a crossing pattern. Tough to defense, Paul. There's no question about it, Jim. What happens is that the linebackers are all, first of all, with the fake, they're going to their right, and then now they got to come back. And by that time, the tight end is underneath them, and the only man that really can make a play on it is a safety. See if Navy can cash in. They have a first down with the Arkansas 30. Play action fake. And here's Burns. Back over the 40. Bumbles on out of bounds. That'll be a tremendous loss for Navy. Nathan Jones on a blitz was coming for Arkansas, coming from the weak side, and he collared Burns for the sack of the 40. Nathan Jones, this is a fake reverse. You see Lobb coming back to the outside. Nathan Jones was not fooled at all. Obviously, he's well. He's back in the game and makes the sack. That's a loss of almost 11 yards. Well, it's second down and 21, so call it 11 yard loss from the 40 yard line of Arkansas. Maybe opening up the hill, they're really coming to Arkansas. They throw underneath the coverage again. Drop pass, one four by four by John Burner, number 28. Third down and 21 at the Arkansas 40. Razorbacks have been aroused here when Navy's gotten in Arkansas territory in the second half. They have closed the door with authority. See, that was not a bad pass pattern either because that ball, if, if Burner would have caught the ball, would have picked up about eight or nine yards, which would have put him in, in pretty good position. Now they only had to go third and 12. They're back to third and 21 now. Ken Hyde has been the dangerous receiver for Navy. He's wide to the left side. Lob is out to the right. Setting up the puck. And they throw in a neat end. Dropped again. And Pennick for sniffing the tight end. And Navy's having a little trouble holding the ball. They've dropped three or four passes in this drive. And now it's fourth down, and Navy's going to have to punt the ball. Beat him number 99 and company, but watch Sniffin now. He's going to come underneath. First of all, you need 21 yards. This is not the man you throw the ball to. But the pressure by the defense was just so strong, they had no choice. Colby's in the puck for Navy. He'll try to pin Arkansas back deep if he can. High kick. Arkansas has been very good at this tonight. This ball kicked on in the end zone. So there's the difference. Arkansas will bring it out to the 20 with some breathing room. And they'll take over the 10 point lead. 20 to 10. 5 minutes, 22 seconds to go in the third period. Well, coming up next week, Miami takes on Notre Dame here on ESPN. That's live next Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And every Saturday night throughout the college football season, you'll see College Football Association. Action here on ESPN Live. The last series of downs that Arkansas had the ball, which ended up in a fumble, they were running the ball every time. Now the question is, will you come out and start throwing it because they're giving Shebest a lot of room? No, they're not. Now they run a little counter play with the right halfback. Tatum. They fumble again. Tom Dobbin is in there. I don't think that was a fumble. That was Bobby Joe Edmonds. Bobby Joe Junior from St. Louis, Missouri. All right, there's 42 is Doman. He's coming in as one of the linebackers. Schildmeyer is, is out of the game now, and the other linebacker is Taylor. And the linebackers are just firing into the middle. They have no responsibility really wide. What they've done is move Tatum, the left half, replacing Miller, and put Evans over the right. Now, here's the option play now, not on the pitch out. Goes outside to Tatum. And Tatum turns the corner for the first down. Up over the 30-yard line before Eric Wallace can get to him. So that time, they got to the corner with the option and made it Kelly, Tatum on the carry. They got to the corner Eric because Wallace the corner did not tackle. come up in pursuit like first he should have. Eric Arkansas Wallace did not play the play the on Tatum. Once you see that quarterback coming down the line of scrimmage, you are released of your pass defense responsibilities, and now you play run. Seabass is back in there for Arkansas. He's been the big play man tonight for the Razorbacks. Two touchdown receptions. Here's another big man, Nut, Nut rolling out, looking for Seabass. Throws him in the button hook. He's got it over the 45, 47 yard line. They cannot stop James Seabass, the elusive sophomore from Houston. He is not that fast, but he is so sure handed. And against the man from end coverage, he's tough to hold down. First down, 
Yeah, but the pass protection, you know, this is all off a run fake now. You're going to see Nutt come down. Look at the blocking. Everybody is getting their man. Yarbrough is there. The left guard getting his man. Number 56, Elliott getting his man, Zelinski. Arkansas coming to the midfield as the fake to the fullback. Now here comes the pitch outside to Bobby Joe Edmonds. Edmonds in the Arkansas territory. First down on the 33. Bobby Joe Edmonds now. 4-4 four, four speech to the 40. Giving Arkansas some explosive play out of the back here. Well, Macbeth, the corner man, makes a mistake. Now watch it here. Here's the toss. Now see number 19, Macbeth. He goes to the inside, which he should should not have done. He had Fudge, number 44, to the inside. He has to play outside for the toss. Ends up making the tackle, but after about a 15-yard game. Well, with Paul Miller, the regular left half into this game, number 41, Bobby Joe Edmonds, who's been out with a dislocated elbow of his own, is coming through. Here's not in the play action. Throws the ball, and it's complete down to the Lunars. Lunars inside the 20. Arkansas now is really clicking here behind the passing of Nutt and the running of Edmonds. And the Razorbacks are inside the Navy 20, first and 10 at the 19. Number 54, Zaleski, the left tackle for Navy, is hurt. He hurt his arm. There's the Lusky 54, 247-pound senior from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania, in the Pittsburgh area. Started in 1983 when Rutherford was injured. And then he got a starting call here again tonight, replacing Matt Kirby, that left tackle. So I think we'll see Kirby back in there. Here's the team that's really taken charge in this game, though. The Arkansas Razorbacks, undefeated so far with a win and a tie. Tying Ole Miss coming from behind, 14-0 to tie him, and then beating Tulsa last week. Here comes the counter play to Tatum. Tatum tries the right side, not much doing. Stacks up after a game of about two or three. When you play against the wishbone or the flex bone or whatever you want to call it, Jim, and what Navy is doing in this drive, you cannot guess. You must play the defense, a disciplined defense. Every man has a man that's in an area that they're supposed to be in. And when you start guessing like Vince McBeth did, and also Eric Wallace by not playing the pitch, they're going to move the ball on you. Billy Warren has come in, maybe the best blocking halfback for, there he goes, Warren just off the bench, dives down to the 15-yard line. It'll be third down, close to six. Dirk McFarland, the nose guard for Navy. Call it third down and five inside the 15-yard line. There's Warren, number 33, a sophomore from Newport, Arkansas. Very strong, they say bench presses over 300 pounds. Only five foot nine. Looks like a backfield of jockeys here. <laughs> Foreman's five, seven and a half. Warren, five, nine. Miller's about five, 11. Now, hell of the flex, here's the fake. Here comes the run on that, and he's run down. There's the way to play the option. You, you, they kept the pitch away from Edmonds, and they're able to play the run of Nutt. Nutt is not going to beat him running. The other guys can beat him on the pitch. Exactly, and Mike Taylor, the linebacker, which is the W side linebacker, the weak side linebacker, played Taylor. Everyone else was covered. No place for Nutt to throw the, to pitch the ball to. Well, they got the uh, field goal set up now for about 33 yards. Horn, who is at two for two tonight, had four last week. So he's on a hot streak. Here's Horn. Straight on conventional kicker. Plenty long enough, but I may not be through there. That one's wide to the left. Okay. So Horn, after hitting twice tonight, is missed from 33 yards. Navy now will take over at the line of scrimmage, or rather at the 20-yard line, with one minute, 21 seconds to go here in quarter number three in Little Rock with Arkansas leading 20 to 10. Friday, October 5th, join ESPN in Lexington, Kentucky for the first of eight live events in the Breeders' Crown Championship Series. We'll be traveling around North America for each hour-long program featuring two to four races and it leads up to our final live race coverage in November. So that's harness racing at its best. It's live here, ESPN, in October, November, coming to you October 5th in Lexington, my old hometown, Paul. There's a slant gift to Klaus. Pretty little uh, tailback. Left by Nick Miller after he picks up about three or four yards. Let's see where they spot it. They put it on the 22, it'll be second and seven. Sometimes, and on, when I see first down with Arkansas on, on their defensive secondary, they're playing one-on-one. -on -one. Second down, now they move Mark Lee, the outside linebacker, and they double up on the outside. Yeah, they got double on high. Here's rolling, and now they throw it underneath to the tight end, and holding on the ball is Bobby Sniffin down there. 
stop by Nathan Jones. Sniffin, a sophomore from uh, Potomac, Maryland, came in to replace Mark Stevens. Remember, he was really shaken up. They say this guy's potentially great ball. Well, Sniffins, watch this catch now. He's going to take a pop from, from Jones. Nathan Jones, first of all, he got almost knocked out. Now, look at him back in there. Look at the hitting. Basil is lost. Is that Basil with him, or is that Miller? That's Nick Miller, number 47, along with him. They are popping. That's the final minute of the third period now. Arnold is the lead 2010. Maybe he needs to get going here. Burn, firing, intercepted by Arnold Paul. Pulled down by Anderson, the freshman safety. Cornerback. Now, let's see. Lisco was putting on pressure. And so there's the first turnover that goes Arkansas's way. Lasker is the guy that pulled it in on the interception. That was perfect timing, and Arkansas suddenly stings Navy at the Navy 36. Jim, and this comes from just good rush by the defensive lineman. Bill Byrne had to rush the football away, and when he did that, he's throwing the ball. There's Sniffin is there, but Lasker makes the play. Play action fake. That time the pass was broken up by Wallace intended for Shudas. Boy, Wallace is probably a little frustrated on this evening's football game trying to keep up with James Shebes. Shebes has gotten the better part of that duel, but that time Wallace made a dive to break it up. Wallace that time is not giving Shebes that much room. He play, he's playing him a little tighter now, and he's converging on the ball much quicker. But the thing what happens here is all of a sudden you get Shebes, he takes off downfield, and Wallace is going to be standing there. Yeah, six more for the Hogs. Second down and 10. At the 36-yard line of Navy. Shebes is still in there. Theo Young has come in, and here comes Nutt now. Nutt padding the fourth deep, and there's a man wide open. Touchdown, Young. Theo Young came in on the play, and he scored. Paul, I don't think I've ever seen a passing offense so befuddle a defense on as many times as they have tonight. Again, we're talking about Navy. What they're trying to do is guess. And when you start guessing, it's starting to guess run, and they're throwing the pass. Theo Young was wide open. He also not had Shebes on the other side, breaking to the corner. He was open. Theo Young had not caught a pass coming into this game. Now, let's see. We'll check that for in a moment. He's the third string tight end. They try here, and it does not uh, work again. On the try of the point after. All going for two, so it remains 26 to 10. All right, now look at the faking. Coming out here, Nutt has, has two people to throw to. He's going to throw strictly to Young. Macbeth, now I don't know if that's his man or not. He's playing the corner, whether the safety or the rover was supposed to cover the tight end. We don't know that in this game, but he is wide open. But when he goes back to the inside, now again, here comes number 41, Fairley, who does not pick up the tight end coming inside. Now, whether that's his man or not, we don't know. So we'll give the blame to both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the blame goes to Navy. You agree with that, Exactly. Right? Well, Arkansas now with a 16-point lead, 26 to 10. 17 seconds to go in the third period as they prepare to kick off to Navy. And the third quarter has been all Arkansas after a tight first half in which the Razorbacks led the only three at 13 to 10. They've outscored... Navy 13 zip, 17 seconds remaining in the third period. Arkansas looking like it could be a surprise challenger in the tough Southwest Conference. Texas looking good today. Texas Christian having a good year. A&M, SNU all strong. Now to kick off Arkansas is Villarreal. He's been using the script kick, not going to the deep end. This time he's gonna go deep. Coming up here is Wallace. Wallace turning on the speed for 30. And down there was a good play by Kevin White to keep him from getting uh, Alley up the right sideline. But Navy will have fairly good field position out around their 33. There's the score story. Proud story here, Sal Allen, a sea of red. Only at Nebraska, I think, or maybe Oklahoma, you see this much red at one game. <laughs> That's true. What Navy has to do, they have to throw on first down. They've been running on first down. Look now at Arkansas is going out. They're doubling on both both outside receivers. Oh, look at that Theo Young. Is he a happy young guy? Here comes the reverse. Not to fake reverse. Man, a keep by Klaus. And it won't work. Just about no game. They meet Klaus at the line of scrimmage. Arkansas does. Basil and Williams are there. We get a break at the end of third.
Argos up 26, KD 10. In Razorback territory as ESPN brings you live coverage of Arkansas. They have all the third period their way, leading 26 to 10. Navy goes in the fourth quarter. Possibility of two eight-point touchdowns to tie the game. But they got a long way to go. Off from the flat, they go to Pine, and nothing doing. Played perfectly over there by Nathan Jones, the roverback. Still one. So a complete pass, but it's going to be for very little yardage. Nathan Jones made the tackle. Game Nathan Jones, uh, uh, he should get hurt in the beginning of the game. Because ever since he got himself knocked down, Nathan Hines has been going crazy. Number 20, who is their rover back, just stayed with Hines that time. No gain on that play. Third down and eight coming up for Navy. Play action fake. Here is Byrne running out of the pocket. Byrne fires it. And it's a good catch over here by the halfback Ridge Klaus. It'll be a first down for Navy. Taken out of bounds around the 50-yard line on play by Nathan Jones again. So there's the old number 20. Resented the fact he was shaken up a little bit, maybe. Well, Navy scores another first down. Navy needs a big fourth quarter to get back in the game. They're trailing by 16 points in the first minute here of the fourth period. Burn play action again. Burn in trouble. Burn fires it. And it's incomplete. Intended for John Burn of the fullback. Ball was thrown well. Burn has had a good night passing, but Paul should have been much, much better. A lot of drop passes. A lot of drop passes. The fullback Burner has dropped at least two that we know of. You know, when you have people that are out there wide open, you've got to be able to hit them with the football and hope that they can catch it. Sarbury's in now, number 36 at fullback. Sal Bray is more of a runner. He's a pure runner, as a matter of fact. Maybe a little bit more physical, although Burns is a very physical power runner. Sal is a tough kid, too. Still the tailback is Klaus, who's replaced McKellen. They give it to Klaus. Bubble! Klaus falls on it at the 48. He had a pretty good hole there, Paul, and the uh, ball just got away from him on the exchange somehow. He does pick up a yard down to the 48. It'll be third down and nine. Starting to see some lack of concentration, my friend. That, that ball was, was handed to him. Klaus has got to hold on to the football. Rod comes Klaus in with a play from the sideline, replacing Chris Weiler at split in. They send Horn to the top of the pitch to the right. And here goes Bill Byrne facing third down and eight from the Arkansas 48. Got time. Drills it into the tight end, but way short of a first down. Mark Stevens caught it. Mark Lee hit him down immediately, but he's a good five yards short of the marker. So it'll be fourth down for Navy. Jim, look at Hine on the outside. He caught six balls in the first half, but watch what's happening. That's Nathan Jones, 20. He releases him to Kevin Wyatt, number seven. This is going on all the time. He has his double coverage. They're letting him throw anything underneath they want to throw. Colby and the punt for Navy. Single safety back for Arkansas. A high twisting foul back gets called, but they're going to let it kick. And this time Navy can down it inside the five. And they kill it at the four-yard line. Arkansas in the hole, but they lead it 26 to 10. CFA action. Arkansas Navy is brought to you by Chevrolet with the technology, the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and value that make up today's Chevrolet. 13 minutes to go in the game. Navy has put Arkansas back deep in the hole inside its own four-yard line. It'll be first down and 10. Van Dyke now has come into uh, the Arkansas backfield. Running with Tatum. A wedge it out over the five-yard line. Dolman makes the stop. Tatum, the ball carrier. Arkansas doesn't want to make any major mistake back here. They've got a pretty good lead, 16 points in the fourth quarter. They come back in with their top receiver, James Shebest. Also in there is Eddie White, the starting tight end. Theo Young made the touchdown catch a moment ago, comes off, and so does Luther Franklin. So they've been running with two tight ends, but they come back with Shebus. That will try to spread the Navy defense a little bit. Here's the keep my nut, cuts back inside on the keep play, and then he is nailed short of the 10 yard line by Chad Van Hosen and Vince McBeth. So McBeth, the Arkansas, gets another lick in for his team here in his return home. He's not the only part of the Navy party from Arkansas. The athletic director, J.O. Coppage, 
is a native of Blytheville, Arkansas, and he's here, along with the superintendent, Rear Admiral Charles R. Lawson. Rodney Fort is checked in the backfield for Arkansas, winning at right half. The left half is Terry Tatum. And here's the fake, and uh, here's Nutt going up the sidelines, and he's got his man, Fort, out of bounds on the 32. Boy, how about that for Guts? Danny Nutt back near his own goal line. Lobbed it down the side for Randy Fort, who's about the fifth halfback used in this game by Ken Hatfield tonight, the sixth one. All right, just take a look at the blocking scheme, though. Now, the offensive line, they're just setting up and blocking. That's McGee, Elliott, up Church, Erie, and Williams. They're doing a great job. And look at this pass up to Fort. Fort is being covered by Van Halsen, number 85, who is a defensive end. Well, it didn't work. Here's another pass to Van Halsen. That one's grabbed by James Seabest. Yet another catch by Seabest, the clever sophomore from Houston. So Nutt connects again. And hitting two in a row, he has brought Arkansas out of a deep hole. Now they're getting near midfield. A first down. No, it's not a first down. It's a gain of nine. And it'll be second and one at the Arkansas 41-yard line. Clock running here with a little over 11 minutes to go. And Arkansas is sitting atop a 26 to 10 lead. Now they're back in the full house wishbone. They give it to the fullback. And there's not much room there. Foreman tried to find an opening, but there's just no crease. Closed down by Doman and by Kirby. You ready for this, she best? Nine receptions, 166 yards, two touchdowns. He came into this game averaging what? Well, let me tell you, Paul, let me read you the two game totals first. Now, what do you say there were? Two games, she best had caught nine passes for 166 yards. And you tell me he's exactly <laughs> duplicated <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. So he's done in one game what it took him two to do. And he'd been the leading receiver anyway in the Southwest Conference, I think, on average catch, which was almost 18 and a half yards of catch. I think that's Kirby who was shaken up. Junior tackle for Navy. Arkansas, five out of 11 first downs. That's not bad. Anything close to 50% is excellent. They'll measure here to see if you got another one, but I don't think you did. Navy player oh, they're short. They're short by almost, the, almost uh, two lengths of the ball. Well, you're pretty good eye there. Pretty good eye, McGuire. Next week, Saturday, Miami and Notre Dame should be an exciting affair. Notre Dame has bounced back strong after that opening loss to Purdue. Miami's taken some licks, but they've had some big wins too. So that should be an exciting day. Anytime Kozar gets the passes going and Pickett gets in the open field, you see a lot of thrill. They'll help Kirby off the field. This is, where, this, this is where you gotta, you got to really worry. You have third down and the length of the ball, a little bit more than that, and you've got wide receivers against the ball, throw a fake in there. Not the careful first down. Yeah, they they got it. Here. here comes the Bobby Joe Edmonds. Edmonds running kind of a crossing play. Might have been a trap. Bob Plant is there to stop him. Bobby Plant. First down for Arkansas at the Arkansas 46. Now watch the hole here. There, this is the true wishbone right here. And watch Bobby Joe Edmonds come back to this side. The hole is right there. No problems at all. Little counter I like play. I like it. Now it's first down. Arkansas's Danny Nutt. Little work again. Nutt on the fake. Runs the option. Keeps. Pitch is wide. Broken out. Might be a fumble. Let's see. They're going to rule it. Fumble. And Navy gets it. That was broken up by Eric Fudge, number 44, a junior from Phoenix, Arizona. Johnny on the spot. They played the pitch perfectly. They tried to pitch it over Fudge's head. It didn't work. And Navy's got a second turnover. Fudge could have caught this ball and, and would have been able to go in for a touchdown. Watch this now. Nut comes down. He's got Edmonds trailing. Look at Fudge. The ball is in his hands. No one there to stop him because Nut is on the ground, but Fort does a, or, uh, Fudge does a small, smart thing and falls on the ball. Ball was pitched backwards or laterally, so it's a free ball. Here's Byrne rolling, running from pursuit, and he's going to go out of bounds the far sideline. Just about the line of scrimmage, David Basil was in hot pursuit, number 53, all the way of Bill Byrne. Chuck Smith looked like it was a man trying to get open down there. Ten minutes to go in the game. Time running short now a little bit for Gary Tranquil and Navy. Still time left. 
But they should get something going if they're going to get back in this game. Arkansas in command, 26 to 10. Here comes Byrne on a straight drop. Byrne, now that, that was batted down. Incomplete pass that time. The difference there is Byrne's ball was thrown forward. So it becomes a forward pass. The pitch out a moment ago by Nutt was pitched backwards, which is a lad one. Raven Caldwell, he was in Byrne's face. One thing that Navy has to do, they're going downfield with two wide receivers and the tight end. They've got to get their backs into play. They've got to get their backs out of the backfield so they can tie up the linebackers. They're doubling both sides and leaving the linebackers covering one-on-one -on, -one on the backs. Get the backs out of there. Now they have them out. And they got four quick receivers out here. Byrne firing downfield. And there's a bump down there, but both going for the ball intended for Chris Weiler. And good coverage for by Kevin Anderson. Rodney Beecham was putting pressure meantime to Bill Byrne. And Anderson was staying right with Weiler. Incomplete pass, fourth down for Navy. Punting unit comes on for the midshipman. Just under 10 minutes to go in the game. There's Mark Colby, number 90, a senior punter from Sandusky, Michigan. Third year, he's been a punter. He's a two-step punter, Paul. Is that a difference? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, kept the long run by Jerry Thomas. To step this one up, and Arkansas will put this one out of reach. 32-10, the Razorbacks leading. That was a close first half, Paul, but Arkansas has just blown it open here in the second half. Well, you know, the problem is Navy, they just couldn't put it all together in the, in the first half. Again, they, they had to come out and get on top, but to run this wishbone, the broken bone, whatever you want to call it. Flex bone. Flex bone, they, they killed him. Now it's 33-10, Arkansas. game is approaching a little bit of a wrap for Arkansas. Razorbacks led by only three points at halftime, but they've been a house of fire since then. They've scored 20 points in the second half. Navy's been shut out 33 to 10. Arkansas in the lead. There are the Navy deep men. Eric Wallace, Rich Klaus, Villarreal tees the ball and kick it for Arkansas. He kicked the ball on squibs early in the game when the game was close. The last time he kicked off, he uh, put it in the air. Let's see what happens. There was a five-yard penalty on the touchdown, so they put it off on the kickoff. Well, he's going to say this. This goes out. It'll come out to the 30. It's on the end line, and it'll come out to the 20. I don't think it went uh, over the end line. Wait a minute. All right, look, look at this. Here's the replay. That's, that's Marshall Foreman going up in the air, but you can just see the height on Marshall Foreman getting up over the defensive and offensive linemen. Here he comes again. Marshall Foreman over the top, the blocking in the line, up church, 52, the center getting a good block. He didn't have to get a whole lot, just a piece. Now here's this rule. The ball went out of the end zone. They're bringing the ball back to the 30-yard line where you penalize the kicker. Well, they ruled that it did hit beyond the end line on the fly. Navy will change quarterbacks. Bob Mish, a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, is alternated with uh, Byrne already this year. And he'll come in at quarterback, so Mish is in. Ray in motion. Mish on a handoff to his tailback. Penalty flag is thrown down. David Shell on the stop for Arkansas. So we're getting a look at Mish on that handoff to Klaus. Let's see what the flag's about. Legal proceeds to Navy. Next week, Navy plays Arkansas. And next week, Arkan or rather Navy plays uh, Air Force and next week Arkansas goes into the South Cliff Conference to play Texas Christian. TCU. Frogs having a good year. Penalty five yards walked off against Navy. First and 15 now from the 25. Mish as uh, alternate for Navy at quarterback so far has hit 12 out of 32. Not a good percentage, 120 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Here's his first pass tonight, Mish, over the middle, and he drills it in there and hits the tight end, or rather the tailback, Chuck Smith, for a nice gain over the 30-yard line. This is the first play for Smith, number 38, a young freshman from Strongsville, Ohio. Came out of the Naval Academy prep school last year, so right now, Tranquil figuring this game is gone. He's getting a look at some of these young players. And I don't blame him. 
You know, Hine, number 81, had seven catches or six catches in the first half. He has a total of seven now for 101 yards. They completely shut him down in the second half. Mesh off of the flat, and Smith can't hold it this time. A drop pass by Chuck Smith. Mark Alexander, the third string fullback, is now in the backfield for Navy, a senior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Next week, Coach Tranquil will have his fullbacks running pass drills and learning how to hold on to the football when it hits you in the hand because they've been dropping them all night long. That's a good bet. Six out of 15 third down conversions, and Navy now faces third and seven at the 33. And the new quarterback is Bob Mish. Got to pick up seven yards over the middle. He goes. Not a drop pass intended for Mark Stevens, who's usually sure handed, but he was popped pretty good by Ricky Williams, a freshman uh, linebacker, just as the ball arrived. And now Navy sends on the punting unit, and they'll have to kick the ball away with 7.20 to go, trailing 33 10, as Arkansas now has put this game in a pretty safe spot for the Razorbacks. There's Colby's marks on six punts, and here is Bobby Joe Edmonds now. He's come back in the punt formation, or rather safety. Single safety. Kick, and it's going to hit in front of Edmonds. A short kick bounding toward the sidelines, and Navy will kill it around the 35. Not a deep kick here as Arkansas gets the ball with a score. Arkansas 33, and Navy 10. And we'll be right back. The USFNG in the USA. USFNG insures your business, home, auto, and life. You'll find USFNG at 6,000 independent agencies across the USA. Protecting what you value and insuring your way. Since you can't expect to do heat-sensitive work with clumsy tools, Weller designs all its guns and irons to give you maximum control with minimum weight. That's why a Weller soldering tool or a burning iron might cost a little more than a cut-rate brand. But that's also why you'll be able to concentrate on the work instead of worrying about the tool. Weller Guns and Irons from Cooper Tools. The difference between work and workmanship. ESPN's Dazzling College Football Fall pits Penn State against Maryland's Terrapins live October 6th next Saturday. Highly ranked Nittany Lions led by quarterback Doug Spring, but they have D.J. Dozier in the backfield. They'll try to bounce back. So that'll be here noon next Saturday on ESPN. Maryland, Penn State. Duffy now in the ball game for uh, Arkansas, hitting straight ahead up through the 38-yard line. Matt Kirby and Dirk McFarland going there to make the stop. Arkansas uses some different players. Well, Richard Duffy has come in. Now here comes Danny Nutt out, and he's getting a great hand from the Arkansas fans. They also have Van Dyke in the backfield, number 35. And, and here's the first look at a touted freshman quarterback, Greg Thomas. They think he'll be a great one for Arkansas. Thomas runs the pitch. Now the side he goes. Here's Van Dyke. Van Dyke on a sweep. Gets around the corner for another first down for Arkansas. Joe Papetti on the stop. Well, we're seeing players we never dreamed of seeing, Paul. <laughs> Just wondering when you're going to dig down into that old bag of yours and take a look at some of these guys. That they're just about on the roster. Arkansas way ahead, 33 to 10. They have completely shut down Navy here in the second half, and they have taken command. Explosive play. Danny Nutt, outstanding player, comes the freshman Greg Thomas. Thomas Keep. Thomas still going. He's just a freshman, remember? Down to the 25. Arkansas fans are going to love this guy for the next four years from San Angelo, Texas. He was all Central Texas quarterback in high school last year. And what a future he seems to have. Sings in the choir, and he makes music here, too. Don't tell him he's a freshman. Watch this, Thomas. He knows he's got a trail man back on the outside. That's Warren, but he's just going to cut it back to the inside. Look at this. He's, that's Fudge trying to tackle him right there, number 44. He runs right on by him. Now the back of the true wishbone. And the inside handoff to Billy Warren, stopped by Dirk McFarlane. Billy Warren on the 
Clock rolling down with 5.40 to go. Arkansas 33, the Navy 10. Warren, number 33, is a sophomore from Newport. Ken Hatfield has been able to use about eight halfbacks and two fullbacks tonight. So he's gotten to see a lot of action out of these young fellows. The first time Arkansas in the three games has had any kind of a comfortable lead. It's nip and tuck with Tulsa last week and then the game of Ole Miss very, very close. Fullback hitting straight ahead stop by Matt Kirby. Duffy picks up maybe a couple of yards. Going to bring a third down for Arkansas at the 18-yard line. And it'll be third down and three. Don't forget now they're using a uh, young man from Youngstown, Ohio, Markel Cagney, who's a junior. There's Tranquil, coached under Woody Hayes at Ohio State. It's, gonna be a long, it's been a long night for him here in the second half. All Arkansas. Ken Hatfield had his team ready. Here's the keep by Thomas. Oh, <laughs> he paid the price. Oh, boy. Thomas. He may have to eat through a straw for a couple of days. <laughs> Vince McBeth, <laughs> who's from Arkansas, has had enough of this. He really put a pad on him. Watch this. Vince McBeth has been waiting to do this all night long. He cuts back to the inside and just watch this with Thomas. Said, well, I'll pitch. No, I won't. McBeth says, you bet next, you won't. Next time you come out of there pitching. <laughs> Freshman has to learn. You have to learn. Now they're going to go for fourth down, and Thomas wants to keep it. Here's Thomas dancing for the first down, I think. If he gets across the line, he's going to have the first down. That'd be in the 15-yard line. Right at the 15, clock's rolling, now under four minutes to go. Two games next Saturday, noon, Penn State, Maryland, 7.30 p.m. next Saturday night. Notre Dame and Miami here on ESPN. As we continue to bring you live action, the best and College Football Association action throughout the 1984 season. Well, the Hogs are happy tonight. It's been a big night for the Razorbacks. They'll be heard from in the Southwest Conference race. Thomas handed it off that time. Tried that keeper play a moment ago, and he's got a good memory. Duffy again hits the middle. Duffy on the carry. Yeah. You better hand over. You have the big fullbacks in there. All you want to do is run the clock out. It's 327 and counting. Just get out of there. Except the young guys love to play. You know, they get in, they don't get that many chances of playing in the game. And when they do, they want to perform. Well, you're seeing two freshmen here, Richard Duffy is from Houston, Texas. And of course, Greg Thomas, who's from San Angelo, Texas. Two players of the future here for Arkansas. This time they wrap up Thomas for a loss. Cracking through there with John Fuller, a sophomore defensive end from Springfield, Missouri, or Springfield, Virginia, for Navy. Greg Thomas kept the football. He was stopped. This will be the second Fuller. loss in a row for Navy after their opening win over North Carolina, beaten by Virginia, and now here, Arkansas. All right, Fuller's playing the defensive end, which is a linebacker. He didn't take the fake at all. He's right there on Thomas. And, and you notice the official blew the whistle. When you're in the grasp, you're, you're, you're down for all intents and purposes. We may see Thomas throw the ball now. Well, it's uh, third down, passing situation, about 10 to go. Yep, here he comes, Thomas. Now he's going to run a quarterback draw, and they're going to sack him around the 21 or 22. A whole wave of white shirts came in for the Navy, led by Bob Plants, a sophomore Thomas defensive tackle. To pass. Well, i got to put a hurt on you a little bit here. John right. Fuller. She best. Nine for 156 yards, so he didn't so he tie his, up, his output from the first two games. So that's 18 catches in three games, though. That's going to put him, I think, Paul, up somewhere among the leaders, certainly in the Southwest Conference, but maybe even nationally. So GBS will be a guy bearing watching. And remember, he's only a sophomore, so this is a young team here. I like Danny that. Greg Horn will try Greg one from 37 yards. Goal. Plenty of length. Straight it up. Is it? No, it is not. It's outside, and so Horn it is no missed good. again. But Arkansas continues well ahead, 33-10 over Navy. Tonight, that's for sure. The Arkansas Razorbacks, minute 41 to go. Navy's got one more chance here to try to do salvage something. Bob Mish quarterbacking the midshipman. Mish. Hands up the middle. Here comes Alexander, the fullback, with some running room and crosses the 30, scores a first down. Arkansas gladly give him that. There's Mark, number 49. Probably has the best size of the Navy quarterback. He's 6'2 and 230. 
David Dudley made the tackle. Clock's rolling, though, with a minute and a half to go. Navy's got a long way to go if they're going to score again in this game. I just think they want to, they'll probably end up throwing here, but I just think they want to get out of here without any more injuries, get off the field. The game, for all intents and purposes, is over with. Oops, they're going to throw. There's Mish over the middle. Almost intercepted. Boy, that was almost picked off by Eric Whitted for Arkansas. Red shirt freshman. There's another freshman player for Arkansas out of Dallas. 18 years old. So this is a very kiddish team in Arkansas that Ken Hatfield has. And another year or so, you're going to see, I think, about the same turn that they had down at Air Force, the way things are looking here. Coming up next, the che Chevrolet College Football Report highlights and scores. George Graham from ESPN right after the game. Now we have just a little over a minute to go. Chuck Smith struggling for yardage here for Navy. And we're coming down now to the final minute to play. There's Smith, freshman. A lot of young players getting in some licks here in the final minutes of the game. Navy's record's going to go one and two. And Arkansas will be two wins, one tie. The tie coming to surprising Ole Miss, a team that's surprised more than one. Next Saturday, Bernie Kozar in Miami against Allen Pickett in Notre Dame. 7.30 next Saturday night here on ESPN. That handoff goes for naught for Chuck Smith again. Miami and Notre Dame both scored victories today, so they're going to be going in there on the high note next Saturday at 7.30 p.m. right here on ESPN Live. Well, maybe fourth down, they're just going to go for it. And, and the only problem is that if, if they don't get the first down, the clock will stop when the ball turns around. 15 seconds ago, Mitch going to throw a fourth down pass. Here's Mitch going upfield, got his first down. And Come then on. he fumbles away the ball, and Arkansas's got it around the 44, and time will run out probably. White, Nathan White, got over the ball, but it was Eric Whitted, the young freshman, who really popped the receiver, Mike Ray. Ball squirted loose. Another turnover for Navy that really doesn't mean anything because the play is going to end on the next play of the game. Eight seconds to go. Solid win here for Arkansas. Very impressive second half. They showed they could win without their first line quarterback. Brad Taylor was on the sidelines. Danny Nutt just did a marvelous job, but a spectacular game by James Shebest. Two touchdown receptions, nine catches overall. And I think you'll be looking at the last play of the game right here. There's the delay of the game. I'm sure they didn't want that. <laughs> I'll tell you how far they are down in the depth chart, my friend. There's number 73 for Arkansas is in the ball game, and he didn't make the roster. <laughs> I mean, any part of the roster. We mentioned uh, Miami and Notre Dame next Saturday night. Well, next Saturday afternoon, we're going to see First Penn State down, see if they can bounce back from that Texas disaster today. They have D.J. Dozier, one of the great running backs in the country. I guess Maryland, a team that's coming back. They beat Wake Forest today, so they're sitting still after losing to Syracuse. And how about Syracuse? They upended Nebraska today. That'll change the polls around. And here you've seen a solid win by Arkansas. The game is over as Arkansas defeats Navy by a score of 33 to 10. And Paul, that's just a solid performance put together here by Ken Hatfield, his staff, and his team. Navy was in the game for half of the ball game, 13 to 10 at the half, but the wishbone, the flex bone, just, just wore them down, and when you start to guess against that kind of an offense, you're going to get burned, and that's exactly what Navy started to do. They started to play run, Arkansas came out throwing the ball. When they were playing pass, Arkansas ran the ball. Just hurt them. Well, hats off to that man right there, Ken Hatfield from Arkansas. He was a hero here 20 years ago. Came back to celebrate the homecoming with his old teammates tonight. He did it in style as his team beat Arkansas. We'll be coming right back here in a moment. Final score, Arkansas 33, the Navy 10. <laughs> 